Hey, how you doing? What up? How you doing? Nothing much, man. You know what's funny? I was supposed to meet Andrew here early just to chat, but he's he's a bit late, but he got the link. He's good. Okay. He's good. How you doing? Good, man. How are you? Let's do some housekeeping before he comes. Uh, first thing is I want to let everybody know that on Boston's forum, I'm now a member and I've written a thread that's on the supplement section where I include the, the sources that I use personally for all of my co cognitive stuff or anything else that I need to get personally. Just the reason why I put it there, honestly, is not just to support Boston, honestly, but it's way more convenient for me because I kind of don't have to list it every time for everybody. So you go to the forum. You ha There's only one that has a discount code, which is Cerebralizin, which, by the way, I don't take any of the money out. I just buy more Cerebral Cerebralizin on Cosmic Detropic. I'm not making any money out of that. I just buy more. So that's the one that has a discount code. We're going to try to get one for All Day Chemist also and put it on there also. Oh, that would be a good one. Yeah, I'll get it. If we get it, we'll try to find one. I'm, I asked my wife to try to get it. And anyway, everything's there very well listed for you guys. I've also written like the most interesting things on each one. So for example, on Cosmic Neotropic, check out Picamillan, check out Simax, check out all the uh, pharmaceutical grade stuff that they have. And then I mentioned like the difference between Alibaba, how to use. And, and another thing, Boston, before you say anything else, what do we want you guys to do though, is when you use India Mart and you find that HCG supplier for $7 that works very well, which does, and we found one comment back on on the thread say this is the source that i liked so that everybody knows this is reliable because it's basically a bartering forum i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna go on there and vouch for it and then i'm gonna, I'm gonna make it a sticky so it goes to the top Perfect. you could yeah. probably uh, message or email all day chemist yeah no no we're, we're in the process i already got the code but they just messed up the code oh, okay yeah it's all day chemist has a sister company that carries other stuff that's I'll less use that legit. code too I'll use that code too. When you order, do you use a, a code or do they hook you up? No, I've never used, I, I've never had a code with anything. I always, through. I always have to buy my stuff on that. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do it together. I'll get it for both of us. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that's one thing I wanted to let everybody know everything's there. And that is a very legit uh, form. I wish I had that when I was younger. The second thing is about the channel. I want to let everyone know we're almost at 20,000 subscribers. So I'm very happy about this. Everyone knows I stopped doing informative videos at 10,000 because I was annoyed that I was making them and nobody's watching them. Still, nobody's watching them. I made one today. It's a thousand views, but at least I hit at 20,000. So I'm like, I'm going to start doing them again. So from now on, the main podcast we're going to have are just Boston every week. And then we're going to have mainly Boston and me and Derek and Steve will do every two weeks. And maybe me, and I'll have some other ones once in a while, but it'll be mainly me and Boston every week. So that's my main podcast. Other stuff, I'm going to do informative stuff, stuff like that. So you guys can rely on stuff here. And honestly, I'm so excited for today's podcast because we have the best questions. They're great questions. We have we had over 90 questions that were amazing. I just had to pick 16. Guys, don't be upset at me if I didn't pick your question, but ask next time. They're really great. I was really impressed. Uh, now, Boston, before Andrew comes on, do you want to discuss what you did with our little friend in uh, San Diego? <laughs> Which friend in San Diego? The the, the guy who, who poses his forearms and his uh and his abs through his t-shirt. Oh. Yeah. Did no, you did you want to talk about what well, you did to if me? You're, if, you're okay, <laughs> if you're okay, if you're okay with I'm it. okay. You, you you did it. Now it's over. It's over. Well, yeah, no, he's never I, gonna... <laughs> but I have, tell, I have to tell the backstory. So long story short is Leo asked Dante if you'd come on the no, show. No, that's not the long story. The, tell him the beginning. That He messaged me the whole... Oh, wait. Well, he messaged you, you know, yeah. about trying to correct me about the food, all the odd stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's like, he messaged me saying Fod's basically very unhealthy and I didn't tell him to do this stuff for his kidneys, but Fod's stupid, so he said it's about his kidneys and I'm not the real one. That's the problem. So I messaged him back with like one line, like it's okay. Then I forgot to message him. It was a long, long essays of text. I told uh, Boston that he's like an endurance texter. Like he he's lives a, in Arizona, not San Diego. No, he moved. Is it in? Oh, he moved to Arizona. I thought he was. No, well, his company's in Arizona. No, he lives south of me in San in San Diego. Okay, he he lives very close to me. Your nutrition's in Arizona. No, no, he lives here though. He lives oh, not wow. above San Diego in a little. Um, so he owns a company in Arizona, but he lives in San yeah, Diego. That's crazy. That is very weird. Anyway, so he, he sent me a bunch of texts. I just then I forgot to respond to him for a couple of weeks. But last week, Boston was like, "If he's going to come on the show, ask him." So for Boston, I responded again, and then I received. Oh, I received like <laughs> Boston's show. I showed Boston a video. Okay, this is the problem. Da in the middle of it, Dante Trudell is like, now I'm going to know if you're a real man or not. And then he tells me all this shit. But look, dude, if you're talking about my friend and you're calling him a rat 
and he's not a rat. Of course, I'm going to tell him what you're saying. I mean, this is my friend. I'm not your friend. It's not. What do you? And I, anyway, you tell him the rest. He had one. Oh, what's up? Welcome, Andrew. Hey, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I had problems with my computer. I had to use my phone. Oh, okay. Welcome. Welcome. We're in the middle of a Dante story, but, but it's good. <laughs> oh, so, man, don't worry. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. So with, with Dante, he, uh, so basically he, uh, I, he sent you those messages saying that I'm a f- work for the feds and I work for the FBI and all this shit. And you sent me the screenshots of what he said. So the I, video, I, I couldn't even screenshot it. It was too all long. This stuff is, is absolutely like ridiculous. Like it, it was so mind boggling, all the bad information and all the lies that were in there. I had to reach out to him. So I'm like, Hey man, let me, what did like, you do? Yeah. Talk. He didn't, Boston hasn't even told me what he did. He just, no. I told Boston not to do it. Two days later, Boston messaged <laughs> me in the morning randomly. And, it, and it's not cause I'm like, I had to do it. I, it's not that I'm upset about it. I just want to draw facts on him. No, I dropped the facts. I know. So, well, no, well, he, he thinks so. Anyways, he had one piece of the puzzle, right? He actually had the guy from FDA's name, right? No, but that's from the FDA. He thinks FDA, it's the FBI. F- he thinks FDA. it's the FBI. Correct. Everything's wrong in a story. Yeah, I know. So the guy, he has his name right. His name was what he said. Like he Jerry Ward, that same, the, the same name. That, yeah. yeah, the FDA that I've had a conversation with, he had that name right. But mm-hmm. that's the only thing right he had in the whole story. Mm-hmm. Everything else was wrong about how I was a, a CI for the investigation, how I gave out incriminating information, how I'm a fed, how I currently work for the FBI, everything, everything he told you. So I said, Hey, Dante, I said, I just want to let you know that can we get on the phone? I said, so I could drop facts or whatever. I was like, so you don't think I'm some kind of sleazeball rat. Uh, and, and he was like, he sent me these long paragraphs saying thought all these facts saying, I, I, you know, and I'm like, dude, he was like, I don't talk to anybody about this. He's like, I haven't mentioned this in years to anyone. I'm like, really? Will you just talk to, told Leo about it a couple days ago. He's like, well, that's because Leo brought it up to me. No, I did not. Yeah. So I, I didn't check, but anyways, he wouldn't, he wouldn't call me obviously, but he was kept writing long paragraphs. So I was responding to him and I sent him voice memos of what actually happened. And he was like, well, you shouldn't be mad at me or you shouldn't be uh, picking a, a fight with me. You should be going after my, you know, you should be going after the two lawyers that told me this information. And you know, the funny thing is Leo is let's be honest with all these screenshots that you've sent me from my buddy, Tyler Woosley has showed me, he's reached out to multiple people that have came to me about this. If I wasn't a real fucking like butthurt about this in a, in a, in a typical money hungry asshole, dude, my lawyer is crazy. Cause I only have a lawyer to protect myself. Cause I was getting sued a lot more back when I was making money. My lawyer is one of the best. He's so feisty. He's taking cases pro bono for me because he loves to fight. I won't even bring this up to my lawyer because if I do, he's going to be like, let's fucking get him. Let's fucking get him. I would never do that. And Ariello is like, you should do it. Fuck him. You know what I mean? And I'm like, babe, I don't go to, I don't want to go to court. I don't care about this. I just wanted to drop facts on him. Imagine what would happen if I went for de- defamation of character of him saying, I work for the f- feds. I'm currently employed by the FBI and all this shit. Imagine that, all the texts that I have from you, from Tyler. And he lives in California, which has no protection for that lawsuit stuff. He, he, he's, he's so yeah. fucked. And I wouldn't even tell my lawyer because he would get a hard on. You know what I mean? And I would, never, litigation I would, never, I would yeah. never do that. I just wanted to contact him. And, you know, he probably thinks he's protected because it's true. But guess what? It's not fucking true. I told no, no. him the story and everything. I do, I do think he thinks it's true. I think he thinks it's true. But yeah, I yeah, also- he does. So, so just for the audience to know some background about this, this is not a subject I take lightly. As you guys saw, I made the video about Greg Doucette being a snitch. Now, whether Greg Doucette, I mean, Greg Doucette is, a, I'm not going to get into too much detail about that. But the point is, I don't like snitches because of my past. I've been a delinquent youth. I was, you know, I never snitches. I never snitched. I don't like snitches and stuff like that. So me and Boston are friends. Somebody came to me <clears throat> about four months ago and told me Boston is a snitch. And I, this was at the same time that I was doing the Greg Doucette thing within a few days. So immediately I called Boston on the phone. No, I, I text Boston and I was like, is this true? And I start questioning him. He calls oh, me. You called me. Uh, no, you called me. You called me like yeah, a no, minute later. I told, I told, I told you. you called we talked, no, we talked on the phone like 30 minutes. I asked him questions. I didn't believe him yet. I said, okay. 
because I'm very careful. I went and then interviewed the two people. There was one guy who told me and one guy who told him. I interviewed each of them and I interviewed the source. I got all the facts, every single thing. I repeated it twice, three times. I got all the names. I checked the names with Boston. I asked Boston's names. And what I was surprised to find out was that Boston was telling the truth. Boston would tell me things that the other guy knew, that Boston had no idea the other guy knew. And then the other guy would say the same things, but get things wrong in the details of the statements. And then what I realized in the end was very simple. Basically, the FDA at some point came to Boston. It's a long story, but it, he did not snitch. I understand what snitching is, really what snitching is. Dante doesn't. So when Dante was texting me, I don't want to get too involved with him because I know the story. So I just responded to him. There's no paperwork. You don't understand how this stuff works. If there's a confidential informant, there's paperwork and he has to inform. And they will never reveal the name of a confidential informant until the trial. He was telling me, no, Boston has went to a, there was many details that he said, but the point is he was, he was getting into details and I was saying, this is physically impossible in the legal system in the U.S. He doesn't understand the legal system because he's never been in a criminal conviction. So he doesn't, he doesn't understand have any paperwork. To prove no, no, it's not about paperwork. It's, it's not true. It's not what true. I'm saying is, what I'm saying is he told you he had proof. But he's like, I can't do it because. No, so what he would do, he would do. He would, this is the funny thing. He, this is so annoying. He would send me this line from an email. I like, he would that. listen to this, guys. Listen to the. He would screenshot the whole email. Then he would take out this one line. Then he would send it on Instagram. So I have to zoom in and literally it's one word. I have to scroll to the left, scroll to the right to get across the line. And what does the line say? It, every word is like removed and it's like, yeah, he might be informing something. I'm like, what the? F what is this? What are you trying to tell me? I've talked to the guy for hours about it. You know, and then he kept saying FBI, which was also wrong. That's, and so so that, that's, that's the thing that really why I messaged him. He's saying that I had run ins with the FBI and I'm currently employed by the FBI and all this shit. Like, dude, I've never been in trouble with, in, with the law ever, except when I was 18 years old, I got busted for stealing condoms and lubrication. And I ended up I ended up staying the night in jail and I ended up paying a big <laughs> and I ended up paying a big fee. And that's, that's not even on my record anymore. I have never been in trouble with the law or arrested except that one time when I stole condoms and lube and almonds. No, but, but I'm very aware of the details of the situation, guys. And as the audience knows, I'm very rigorous and I hate snitches and I hate liars and I've researched the subject a lot. And Dante, I'm not hating on you for making a mistake, but you're not a, you don't know what you're talking about because you're not involved in these kind of things. And so, the, And the most fucked up thing, Leo, is I told you the story about them contacting me and yeah. what they wanted me to do and what I told them and I, how I reject them. Everything. So not, I'm the opposite. I'm the fucking opposite of a fucking snitch. Yes. And, and you're extremely honest. Like, yeah, like I, 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 eat, like, I couldn't, I know. If whatever. Somebody Let's, for, if somebody called me out for being a snitch and I was actually a snitch and, and was working with the feds, I would probably have to message him on the side and be like, dude, you're right. But like, you know what I mean? Like I, I couldn't lie. No, you wouldn't go confront the guy. But, but the other thing is this, the whole thing started out by me saying, Hey, you want to come on the podcast with Boston? He wants you to come on. And then him saying, I actually don't do video requests, but I'd like to let you know. And then there was 10 pages of text about you. I was like, what? What's going on? Anyway, Dante, we were just being nice. You actually have nothing to say. And you've never actually added value. I was being nice last time too. The only value you've added is adding two supplements. You don't understand supplements. You don't understand nutrition. Fouad was wrong, but you're wrong too. That's the truth about all of them. The, the, the last thing I'm going to say is the annoying part too is when I messaged him and he kept he kept writing me essays, right? And at the very end, he's like, you shouldn't even be He's like a chick. About, he's, he's like a chick. He won't concerned. talk to you. You shouldn't be concerned about this. You should be concerned about getting your health back with your kidney failure and caring about your kids. And I'm like, dude, how do you know? How do you know how I feel? How do you know how I'm taking care of my kids? Like he kept using that as a clutch. Like you shouldn't be mad at me. Well, he added that at the end of mine too. Yeah. Well, if, if that's the case, then he shouldn't be digging you a hole. While if you, if you were a snitch while you're, you have kidney failure, why is he digging you a little hole? Yeah. Uh, if he really cares yeah, about I you. I called him out on that. Cause he, he's like, I don't even talk about this. I haven't last time I talked about it was three or four years ago. I'm like, really? Well, Leo just showed <laughs> me the fucking shit. <laughs> All like, right. Well, Andrew. Leo brought He's like, well, that's because Leo brought it up. You saw the video, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, Andrew, welcome to the show. This is what the show's like. <laughs> I know, I know, and I've been watching. How you doing? I want to say thanks a lot for having me guys on. Eh? I really appreciate it. It's our honor. I'm so happy Boston brought you on. Oh, I appreciate it, guys. Hey, how do you guys know each other anyway? Mostly, uh, I've been on Boston's forum for a while, but we've just been talking back and forth through email. Ah, so, yeah. so, so, uh, Andrew, what's wonderful also is that you're Arab. So I'm very happy to have you on. Yes. So a little Arab mafia going on here. Yeah, uh, we got a double team. And, Andrew Mansour, you're from originally from Lebanon, but from Canada. Are you in Montreal? Yes. No, I'm in Ottawa, close to Montreal. Oh, Ottawa, you said, yeah, Ottawa, yeah. exactly. And so you're, you're near Antoine and Chris and these guys? 
Yeah, definitely. Where, very where does Claude live? Like he's in like Hamilton, so he's uh, just a little past Toronto. So, so it's a it's, few it's, hours from here. So it's like in the middle, or yeah, he's like right under Detroit, basically. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, so you guys yeah. are on the east he's right coast. Right on the border. Here. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And is anyone on? And then Greg Doucette is in the middle of nowhere on the top right, right? He's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. He's Who lives fishing there? Town. Yeah. Why do people What's live that? there? Why do people live? I right don't there? know. Hmm. They like the they like the fishing. I guess I don't know. That's all that's there, really. Yeah. The 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 the, 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 the scenery is nice, I guess, but. The claim is that he ran away there after leaving the last place because he snitched and everyone the reputation yeah, I've bad. Yeah, heard a few stories about him. So yeah. you heard about it in Canada too. Everyone kind of. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. He's well known for his being snaky around here too. Yeah, I've heard that too. So welcome, so uh, Andrew. Andrew, tell us because you have a, a, a crazy story. So tell us about how you became obese originally because it's not. It starts. I mean, there's so many parts of the story. The weight loss yes. is incredible. So I want to yes. talk about that too. Well, it's. Long story, but basically coming from an Arab family, you know, you know, we are, we feed, feed, feed. So I was just, I was fed as a child and we've owned restaurants our whole life. So we used uh, to have like stockpiles of food in our house all the time. Hmm. So went from eating. And then once I got older, I started uh, kind of, I got into the drugs, selling drugs and stuff. So I was just out partying all day and selling drugs. And I partying. saw your mugshot. You looked like a complete, that's what I want to say. You're a totally different person. Yeah, I know, man. I was. Completely different. That was, geez, must have been 10, 12 years ago by now. But uh, yeah, I was... Uh, what were you into? It? You, you were into uh, to, uh, to, 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 uh, distribution of, uh, of stimulants? No, I was selling, uh, I was selling Coke. Oh, yeah. I was going to say Coke, yeah. but I don't want to be specific. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah basically. I'll bring, I'm, it's already been the past. There's nothing I can really say right now, you know? So it's, what's done is done. But yeah, I was, I was selling drugs since I was a child, basically. Just started with weed and then it just... Grew, uh, grew into that so really because when, when I was heavier I had a lot of like self-esteem issues so I was hanging out with like the bad kids you know and I'm from a young age that's what I, I realized everyone was smoking weed so I was like my business mind was like oh I might as well sell them all the weeds since they're buying it so it started from that and grew into selling coke and then that's it <laughs> went on from there How, uh, you're naturally entrepreneurial huh? naturally business minded that's yeah. I just I grew up with them. All, all my uncles and everyone, all my relatives, they all own businesses, restaurants. So, so how did you end up getting arrested? Oh, how did geez, that I, it was a big like forty person bust. It was a huge. Uh, I kind of, I kind of walked into it. I guess there was already an investigation going on, mm-hmm. and these guys in the town up north, they were there's stuff that they can't get anything up there, so it's really expensive. So I was sending it up there. This guy was back and forth on buses, basically, and they were already under investigation. So next thing you know, they got they got investigated and then I got involved and it was a huge thing. Like it was, oh, geez, I must have been in, must have lasted about three years, the whole court case just before it got to uh, actually settled and stuff. Made I got sent to, did you serve yeah. your time? I did three years for that. I got three years for it. Oh, oh wow. did you really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. What kind of, what's the prison like there that you went to? Is it a violent went, prison or a non-violent? Yeah, it's called prison? Joyville Penitentiary. Yeah, it wasn't violent, honestly. What level were you at? It was a maximum. Well, what I, level were you at, at the, in the prison? Level one or you were at a higher level? Oh, you know, maybe uh, no, in, the US, in Canada. We in don't the, have it like that. No, we just go ma- medium maximum. Like we have different, different jails itself. So all the maximums are in one jail. I heard the they're minimum. better the the prisons in Canada than in the U.S. Right? They're less they, violent. They, they are. They're not. They're not like as uh, separated. You guys are big on like, yeah, you know, racial separation and stuff. It's not like that. And here it's it's you know these guys are there doing their time for they're there for a long time. So you show them respect, they show you respect. They're not there to make their time worse. But if shit pops off, it gets it gets crazy. I saw I saw some stuff in there. You know. Do they have a lot of Hell's Angels there? Is that what it is mostly? Yeah, it's a lot. A lot of bikers, a lot of natives too. Natives, like, uh, native, Amer- native Americans. Yeah. Wow, interesting. Yeah, they're, in Canada, there's lots of them, but in j- in the jail population, they're they're very big in there. Fascinating. Wow, this yeah. is a cool conversation. Yeah, no, they're it's they're one of the bigger populations actually. So how did you but get everyone? In- everyone intermingles. It's not like there's no. It's not like you have to stick with your race kind of thing. It's everyone's kind of together in their own little. Their own little groups. Here you so. have to. Uh, here, if you're white, you're destroyed. Yeah. 
in the yeah, Cali- pretty, pretty California much. prison system until you go to prison. If, you, if you're white, if you go to prison in California, you might have some luck. You'll get with these racist skinheads that might protect yeah. you. But in the jail, oh my God. Boston, if you yeah. ever got arrested in LA and went to LA County Jail, you would have had the worst life. I mean, your life would have been hell because the <laughs> thing is the blacks treat you so bad if you're white. And then the Mexicans, they, you're allied with the Mexicans, but there's always like two or one white guy only. So they all pick on the white guy. So mm-hmm. they just take your food. They do it. You know, it's, it's horrible. Yeah. But, but they all ally with each other in races, which is so weird. It's so yeah. racist. Yeah. So, so I wanted to ask you then, how did you end up losing the weight before we get to any of them? I mean, Honestly, I was straight into bodybuilding. No, no. See, I went, I went to a doctor actually, because I was, I just turned 18. Oh. So I went for like a, I went for a checkup, a yearly checkup and I haven't had blood work or anything. The doctor literally looked at me like I, I didn't weigh myself or anything. I was 189 kilos is what it was, which is like 400 and some pounds, you know, and oh. I, was set, I was just turning 18. Yeah, and like, my blood work was through the roof. Everything was, he's, he literally looked at me and like the look on his face, I still remember it. He's like, you're not going to have a long life if you stay like this, you know? Wow. And I never wanted to be fat. No one who's fat wants to be fat. You know what I mean? Like deep inside, they want to be skinny. So I attempted to lose weight so many times, but this time it just stuck. And all I did for the first few months, I literally just cleaned up my diet. That was the biggest thing. Cause I was too heavy to run and stuff. I couldn't do cardio or anything, you know, it's too embarrassed to go to a gym. So I just, I cleaned up my diet and I lost, geez, like 40, 50 pounds in the first couple months just doing that. Wow. Then I started doing some cardio and some stuff around the house and it just started, I got hooked on it and it just started falling off. And next thing you know, I was just extreme. I got too skinny almost and I was like sick looking, you know, and yeah. that's when I got into the bodybuilding is I started, I was like, I wanted to put on muscle to fill in all my loose skin and stuff. And and then, how, um, loose skin be, for, uh, how is your skin at be for when you used to be fat? I had to get a surgery to remove it, man. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, had to get a surgery. I couldn't even tell. I couldn't even tell with your stage photos. No, the sur- it just, it's pretty low and the tan covers it. Like where the uh, surgery is, it's like literally right right where your uh, tanning uh, suit would, or your posing suit would just cover it. And does your health insurance cover that completely over there? No, I have to pay for that out of cash. They only oh. cover it if it's like, uh, like a medical, if it's like oh. you're going to kill yourself or something, you know, it's like. You know, if it's, uh, yeah. what do they call it? There's a word for it. I you like, can't think of it right now. You like their system there or does it make things harder for you? Honestly, it's good and bad. It's good that it's free, but it's horrible, like horrible service. You guys go in and you get your, you get your, whatever you need taken care of right away. I want to get like uh, some kind of test done. It takes months to book a test, you know? Oh my God. Or if you go to an emergency room, you're sitting there for at least six, six hours, at least, you know? Well, like, yeah, it's, it's, hor- it's horrible service though it's just in general it was like that the doctors, in, in are, the doctors are pretty good so it's you take it you take what you can you know I'm not complaining yeah. i used to live in england and i i really detested the actually i worked for the national well indirectly worked for the national healthcare system of the uk because my research was funded by them for grad school but uh i really hated their healthcare system it was yeah, i mean it was horrible because what happens when when you make something public it becomes inefficient governments are inefficient they don't care you yeah, know they, they're lazy they don't have incentives properly anyway so you took that obsession that you had with the weight loss by the way i've lost 50 pounds of fat four times or five times in my life, maybe six times. So I, yeah. I've been fat, but never over 220, but just pure fat though. I'm naturally a fat guy, but I always, whenever I got fat, I got obsessed and then lost it. So at, fi- at 16 or 15, the first time I lost 60 pounds in high school. So I'm, I, I'm a fat guy also. Deep in I, have, I have that too. I'm naturally just, my whole family, we just have that gene in us, you know, we're just heavier set. Like I'm, but like when I was fat, it was weird. I was like, I was like a fridge shape, you know, I wasn't that big sloppy fat. I was like a friggin' tank, you know, because <laughs> I saw those really broad shoulders and stuff. So I, I was, it was a different fat, you know, I saw that when, good, you, when you got muscular, you had crazy, it. crazy shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. So I just had that with a shitload of fat over it, you know? So how'd you get in? So uh, you got really into the bodybuilding, you competed as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. I competed a bunch way back. And then I recently stopped back in 2000. Uh, geez. Must be about three or four years ago. I started getting sick, basically, and that's that was the whole thing. Yeah, tell us. I didn't the story. realize what it was. Tell us that story. How did you first notice things? Then what happened? Tell us the whole story. Well, honestly, now that I've been sick, I look back and like I was sick for so long, not even knowing it. Like maybe about two, three years, even before I got diagnosed, I got I was throwing up all the time and just like always tired. 
and just getting weaker. Like I was training like an animal, but like just getting weak as hell. And I tell my wife, like, man, I'm, I'm losing strength on every lift, you know, like Mm. it was just really weird, but I didn't notice it at the time. Mm. But fast forward to uh, last Christmas, basically it was Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve. I was actually even further than that. Like I had such bad, uh, such bad, but I was so far in my kidney failure. My feet start. I started losing sensation in my feet. I was getting neuropathy in my legs. Wow. So my feet went completely, like, they were like pins and needles at first. And then they went completely numb. Like I couldn't even feel my feet. And I still didn't even go to the hospital then. I still waited till longer. Wow. And then I developed what's called drop foot. If you know what that is, it's like yeah. your foot is basically like you, you can't raise your, yeah. your, uh, your foot basically, you know, God, and I'm just healing, and I'm just healing from that now. Like I was, I was out, I was in a wheelchair for most of the winter and stuff. So, but anyways, going back. So when I had a Christmas Eve, I went, I was so sick. My wife was at work. She came home and I was throwing up my back. I've never had pain. I had pain and right in my back. Like, it was like a stabbing pain basically all day long. And I just couldn't get out of bed all day. So it, we're supposed to go to my mom's for Christmas, uh, for Christmas dinner. I get there and as soon as my mom sees me, she looks at my face and she's like, you look, you're so swollen. You have to go to the hospital. Like my face was like a balloon, you know? Mm. So my wife takes me to the hospital. They rush me in. They take one blood test and then about five or six doctors come in the room and they lock, they close the door and they're like, uh, they're basically trying to console me, calm me down. Like, we don't want to uh, concern you, but you're in stage five kidney failure. You have 5% left in your kidneys and we're going to rush you to another hospital. Like the gen- it's called the general hospital. And that's where they specialize in uh, dialysis and doing the kidney transplants. Hmm. So they rushed me there. They threw, um, threw me on dialysis, basically they did the surgery to install the little catheter yeah. and Christmas day, I was on dialysis. This like Christmas, that, this Christmas, like this last, yeah, last yeah. the one that just passed. So it's been yeah. a year. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, dude. The, the whole, a lot of those symptoms that you had, besides the swelling, um, that I had like the the puking and then the getting weaker. Like my gear dosages were getting higher, but yeah. I was weaker. Like, and then like you take a drug like Superdrol or Anadrol when you should get stronger, and I was getting weaker, and I was like, what the fuck. That's exactly what I was doing. I was like, man, something is wrong. Like, it's not the more I push, the less, I'm just getting less out of it. And then I'd come home from a workout and just throw up out of nowhere, you know, or I'd be driving somewhere and I just have to pull over and throw up. It was just crazy. Do you remember where your creatinine was at when you went in? When I went in, I can honestly find it was over. Um, see, our numbers are different, but I was uh, just over 2000, but ours, ours are different than yours. I don't know. You guys have different numbers. Leo, do you know what that is? No, I have no idea. I've never looked at theirs. Yeah. But I know our range is between uh, 70, uh, between 60 and 100 is the range. And I was at 2000. Oh, God. Wow. Yeah. So I was way over. You so know? Your, like, your, your GRF was at five? I was at five. Yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah. Right now, after my transplant, I'm up to 79. That's awesome. That's crazy, yeah. What's scary is that when you were telling when you were telling the symptoms, honestly, the, the last year I was on hormones, I was nauseous all the time, to be honest with you. I mean, I was waking up sometimes, but I think it was melanotan sometimes, but I was waking up sometimes like feeling like death. Like I was like, like if I die right now, I would be totally okay. I would know. Like I would be like, okay, I, I know why I died. I'm ready for it. Yeah, that's yeah, the thing. That's it's the fatigue. The fatigue was the worst. Like, yeah. Fatigue, I would, just I, want, you want to go sleep. Like you want to go home and yeah. just rest. You can't move. Like literally, <laughs> Leo, I was working. I'm fired from this company now, but I was working and I would be driving and I would just come home and sleep in the middle of the day. Just literally come home and because I'd not take a nap. I was that, that tired. Like it was, it was nuts, man. I've never... And it still didn't include me. I should go to the hospital, you know? It's, that's how crazy I was. Leo, Leo, that melanotan, when I was in kidney failure and I didn't know, every time I took a shot, I would puke in the morning. Yeah. I, I, by the way, the time I'm talking about my, uh, my estimated glomerular filtration, it was 60. So it was low. I was probably in an acute state of like really, you know, kidney damage, which was probably permanent, but it's working now fine just because it recovered a little bit. But that's scary stuff. I mean, that feeling like... I took my life in my own. I remember one time I freaked out so much because I felt like I was dying. And I really felt like I was dying. I was like, this is realistic. I could die any moment. So I called the doctor. They have my blood test. I, at the time, I didn't understand blood tests. So 
I thought the doctor wasn't taking me seriously enough. So I called him and I was like, I am in kidney failure. And then, yeah. and then they got me to the doctor. Finally, I could finally get in reach with him. He called me back and he's like, you're not in kidney failure. I was like, I am in kidney failure. He's like, we just got your blood test. You're not in kidney failure. I was like, <laughs> okay, fine. So I just let it be. But I, <laughs> I mean, I was scared to death all the time. Yeah. Anyway, so how did they, how did you get the transplant organized? Did you get a donor? My brother, actually. MashaAllah, that's wonderful. Yeah, what my brother, great. my brother came through, and uh, a great match. It was honestly, it was a perfect match too. Like he's only a, he's two years older than me, mm. but it was just a perfect match. The way everything matched up perfectly. So they were, and when I as soon as I got the transplant in, like the way they test it is, um, they see how fast you produce urine as soon as they connect your kidney to your the bladder. Mm. And I was producing urine within seven minutes, like before they even stitched me up. I was already mm. peeing on the table and shit. That's another it, thing. Were you were you peeing during while you were in kidney failure? Were you peeing a lot or no? Yeah, because listen, I did, my issue was weird. Most people most people stopped peeing, but I was still peeing normally. But my filters were like my kidneys. The what do they call them? The um, the glomeruli. Yeah, like the basically they were they were clogged. So I was basically pissing water. So oh, all no, the toxins, the, yeah, yeah, all the toxins were staying in my body. So like, hold a sec. Um, yeah, like all the all the filters basically yeah, in your kidneys. Okay. Yeah. They all got clogged up basically. Yeah, yeah. So, by the way, uh, last time when we were talking about the blockage that that doctor found in, in uh, Boston's uh, yeah, yeah. belly, some people commented, they're like, no, there are kidney blockages. No, we know that. But the doctor was just touching him. That's why we were, we were joking about it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, so it gets blocked. And then, so would your pee be clear? Or? Yeah, so I was always peeing clear. It was just like mm -hmm. clear pee all the time. Boston, is you that know, happening so to you? It's and clear all, as fuck, all but it's clear as fuck. But if I have my multivitamin, it's yellow. No, that's yeah, the, that's yeah. just because it passes well. Yeah, but, but the um, but yeah, are you my drinking a lot of water, Boston? Are you? Oh, yeah, water? I was drinking tons of water. Yeah. Uh, was your potassium and phosphorus fine? No, they were through the roof. Oh, see, like, mine are normal. That's weird. See, that's that's one of the things. That's those are the two things that dialysis don't remove. Yeah. Are potassium and phosphorus. So when you're on dialysis, you can't eat phosphates. Or your potassium is like no but nothing were, of that. But they gave you Lasix, right? Tons of Lasix. Like they're giving me 80 milligrams a day. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm just happy because it's a drug. But, it's but you know like, what? I thought I was I, I I thought I was dry and the dialysis was taking everything off me. When they gave me my transplant, I pissed eleven kilos of water in the three days I was at the hospital. Wow. So, I love because they don't feed you after you uh after you come out of the surgery. Wow. So then you piss that that's all the water that was around my heart everywhere. That dialysis wasn't removing 11 kilos. That's like 20 fucking 20 some pounds. Man. That's the heart failure that the dialysis causes. Yeah, exactly. Oh so how did like, you so, look? How did you look on dialysis? Were you lean? I was lean, but you look sick, man. You get this like gray color too. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Dialysis, honestly, Boston, it's it's no. You think it's like normal? Like I don't know how you say people were uh, bodybuilding on it. Like you have a giant catheter Don sticking Long, out. Of you. Don Long did a, a contest prep in. But one did he get a sur? He, he must have got a surgery to pull the catheter up before. No, he he walked on stage with it. Oh, he had this catheter still on. Well, he did the yeah, dialysis. Um, he did the dialysis the night before the show and the day of the show when the show was over. But he he did the at home dialysis. It's every day. It's he did it when he slept every day. Yeah, see, I did the I did the sleeping one, but I had like a fucking like. See, I still have two holes from it right here. Like, oh, he, he had the one right here. He had it on his. Oh, arm. That, that's called like a fistula. They put it in your. In, it's inside your vein. Yeah, he yeah. had Weird, that. They, they attach, they attach it to your artery. It's really weird. Yeah, he had that. It's yeah, not okay, as reliable, I think, for, for the long term, I would assume. that that The one you got is the more uh, serious one, I think. Yeah, the one that's in your arm, it's good, but um, it's weird. I've seen a lot of people, they get these weird lumps. Like That's what he had. He had a big lump right here. A big yeah, lump. Yeah, and it's, it keeps growing and shit because yeah. it starts huge. Your body, it starts forming like tissue around it and shit, and it's like, it's fun. It's it weird. Like, I didn't want. It looked like a huge air bubble on stage. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. That's why I didn't want it. I was like, "Fuck that," you know. Oh, that's crazy. I just kept this thing on. So, how do you feel now? Now I feel great, man. I'm my mm. even like my walking's getting better. Like I used to walk. Like I said, I was in a wheelchair mm. all basically from last February, geez, all up until the springtime. Oh wow. And you on just, Dallas from February till the. I was, I was on Dallas for the, the past year. So wow. Just this like. 
just this Christmas that just passed has been a full year. So it's been a year and a bit, basically. But yeah, I was on a wheelchair and then I had to walk in a walker for fucking a couple months. Like I was still going to the gym. I'd bring my walker to the gym. I'm telling you, man, it was serious. But I went from that. Then I started using a cane and now I got no cane going. I'm just walking, just walking normal now. But I still have the drop foot. I'm waiting to get better. But it's the urea, the, the buildup of the urea is what causes all the problems. That's what we were saying last time. I was thinking, that's what I was yeah, reading. That I, re- I remember when you, were, when you were talking about that, I was like, exactly. That, that's what caused my feet to go numb. Like, that's, that's the what, big thing. That's what I'm worried about Boston. He's not understanding that not getting that cleaned out, the urea is building up and causing damage on all his cells in the body. Because yeah, like, yeah. you know, All my electrolytes are where they need to be. Yeah, that's the weird thing. Stuff. The fact that your electrolytes are there, that's weird. Because It is very right weird. Out. It is very weird and it makes us boss and it makes it even more urgent that you go to the Mayo Clinic because maybe there's something that is temporary, that is acute. You know, the fact that, that you're not you're not feeling bad. There, there that means maybe there's something we can solve quickly. You know, so maybe I have a question for Andrew. <laughs> Andrew, will you ever touch trend again? No, the trend, the trend is what caused it all. I'm not even lying, man. Because I used to know when I would take trend, this is even like before a couple preps back, every time I would take it, I would get like um, it's not right. even like heartburn. It was I would like throw up my food all like almost uh, regurgitate my food all the time. Like it would just come up every time. I and I, then I would just it'd get this nauseous, and I'd always be taught like trend just fucked me right up. Man. You stay on TRT while you're on dialysis. Yeah, they put me on TRT actually. So w- were you tempted to run anything else or no? On dialysis? Yeah. Yeah, I ran. I ran a bunch of stuff on dialysis. Yeah, I tried a few things. <laughs> Didn't expect my kidney that five percent. It wasn't going anywhere, you know. <laughs> so did you run trend on dialysis? No, no. Just for the I felt I didn't want to feel like shit. I don't need that, you know. <laughs> but like, I, I'm no, glad just, that me and Bo are are not the only ones that would run uh, gear on dialysis. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. <laughs> We got the same mind, I guess. <laughs> you bring good people onto the show, Boston. I really like uh, them all. Mabrook, Mabrook, Andrew. This is an Arabic. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. It means congratulations because this yeah. is a, such a difficult struggle you went through. I mean, this is not just a year, the year of misery you must have went through and fear. And I don't know what you went through mentally that year, but oh. even the years before, just not knowing what's I going on. I'm just, uh, just happy Thank to God be you're finally able to move forward now, you know? Exactly. And the only only issue I have now, it's really weird. I don't know if you guys know when you get a transplant, they put the kidney like in your stomach almost, eh? Really? It's like, yeah, it's right under like right by your belly button almost, but like just to the side of it. I had so no I'm, idea. I'm, I'm, I have my appetite's like shit because it's like pressing against your stomach, you know, and it's like it could comp- it's all all compressed in there. So that's my only issue now. I can't eat. Like I eat a couple bites and I'm full. It's does fucking your st- weird. Does now. your stomach bulge up a, b- a bit because of the kidney? You can kind of see it when you're, I'm really lean right now, so you can kind of see it, yeah. but it's like, it's under your belly button a bit. Like it's, your pants would almost cover it, but it's, it's weird. It's weird. It's a weird spot for it, where they put it. <laughs> that's fascinating. I wonder if that's it's a your, I suppose it's the only place they can right? find an opening. Weird. Yeah. What do you say, Boston? No, I said, I wonder if that's a Canada thing where they do it there. <laughs> or if they do that in the U.S. too, where they put it on below your belly button. Probably a Canada. I, I just heard that's where they, they have a gap. There's a, a gap there, supposedly, so they can put, and it's close to the bladder, so it's easy to connect it. Maybe yeah. it's it's just like the way they say out and house and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> we, got our own, we got our own ways here. I'm joking, yeah. Okay, so, so we got, uh, Andrew, so every time we take uh, <clears throat> questions from our audience, this time we had the best questions ever. I'm so excited. The first question is, Brandon is from Brandon is Wise. He says, who would win in a bullshitting contest, Greg Doucette or Fouad Abiyaf? Now, I have a strong opinion on this, that Greg Doucette would win the bullshitting contest yes, because he already won it. They went at a fight and Fouad messaged him privately and said, please stop. <laughs> Just like yeah. he did to me because he couldn't. <laughs> so we already know that one. But Nicholas... Oh, they don't like each other? Uh, no, they had a huge... They had a huge... Uh, like They had an argument about bulking. And then... Like- yeah, no, like months ago, they had a back and forth and then, and then Greg was enjoying it, getting more followers and stuff. Fouad got intimidated. And so he messaged Greg privately and Greg made a video saying, I'm going to stop because Fouad messaged nicely, privately. Like I openly said it and Fouad just accepted it because he's, you know, because he doesn't. <laughs> but anyway, Nicholas DiPietro says, what are Boston's hobbies outside of bodybuilding? And that, and the same goes, of course, for Andrew. And what are your hobbies, Leo, outside of research and cognitive enhancement? 
Boston. That, that's one of my good friends. He just spent the night on my couch. D- is he really? Yeah. You know, I have a friend with the, or I have a client with almost the same name. He's a client of mine. Um, yeah. So he asked what my hobbies are outside of bodybuilding. I wonder why he asked that. Cause he's trying to find other I, hobbies. I don't think he's your client. I think he's my friend or the guy that I know that he's a part-time client that has the same name. <laughs> no, I saw the question. Was it on Instagram? Yeah. yeah is he your friend? Yeah. Oh, weird. They have the same name. I uh, yeah. Yeah. So I know the other Nicholas DiPietro that comments in your comment section. Yeah. You know him too. Oh. No, I don't know him. I see him. That's not my client, but the com- oh. that comment was from my client. Hey, hey, Nick, we're mentioning you. Nick is amazing, by the way. He's one of my, he's the guy who discovered cerebral lice and can cure uh, drug uh, withdrawals. He's oh, amazing. Wow. He's, a, he's a great guy. Anyway. My hobbies outside of bodybuilding are playing with my son. That's all? That's what it. else do you do? Nothing else. What do you do, Andrew? Man, I got to find some new hobbies. That's my problem. I've been, the whole, whole time I was on dialysis, I'm trying to find hobbies. Tried to play video games. I fucking can't do that. <laughs> I mean, I can't do shit. I smoke weed. I don't know, man. I can't focus on anything. Traveling. I used to like to travel. You know, you can't go anywhere these days. Did you get brain fog? Did you, Andrew, did you get the brain fog when you were in kidney failure? Oh, yeah, man. I was I was just a zombie, man. Oh, wow. It, it was, it's hell, man. It's, it was hell. But, yeah, I, I, had, I had the brain fog. Hobby-wise, I don't know, man. Traveling, fucking. You have I don't to, know. You have to get the brain fog because the inflammation that you get from the toxins in your body will directly cause a neuroinflammation. You'll get brain fog. Do maybe you have I, brain fog? Maybe I do, but I don't think I do. Yeah, if, I, if you, that's that's a good sign. I'm still on target with my clients. Like everything's going good now, so I don't think so. No, but when you uh, you, you, you feel it, you feel like dizzy. Now. No, yeah, no, know. I don't. I don't get that. Yeah, you know. Okay, so oh, as for me, I um. You know, I don't really, I, I like, uh, so when I quit arm wrestling, I try to find something else. So I do this bouldering, climbing stuff, but of course you can't do that now. And uh, I used to do something else. With, I have dogs. I go hiking. I take the dogs out. I like outdoor stuff. My wife does too. Stuff like that. We're very into animals. We have tons of animals. We want to get a farm yeah, and, and have like a yeah, bunch. I don't of- have any other hobbies. Yeah, it's funny that you ask. Weird, you, you end up not as you grow older your hobbies either become your career or you lose your hobbies yeah it's actually true yeah. that's what happens you ideally your career is your hobby like what, what is with boston so in that case you love what you do you don't really need you know what i mean um he also asks also opinions on body weight set points in relation to muscle mass how long do you truly have to maintain a new weight musculature for it to stick for lack of a better word i would say at least six months me too what about you yeah it's got to sit on you for a while. Yeah, I'll tell you something. When I went off steroids completely, but I stayed on TRT for like uh, four or five months. I mean, I lost most, but I didn't lose my arm size. I still had 18 and a half inch arms. I wasn't eating much. I wasn't training at all. And just, it doesn't go away fast when you have a lot of muscle. It takes a while, but you have to keep it for a bit. You know, you have to really starve yourself and go or go completely off hormones or not work out for like a year or so for that stuff to really go away. And if you go on a cycle and you get a lot of muscle in eight weeks, that stuff will go away unless you keep it. That's why we stay on cycle for long time periods. Right. Um, Istamak asks, hi, Le- oh. <clears throat> he said, hi, Leo, would love to hear you and Boston speak about your two daily diets and how they differ from one another. I know the two of you have different goals, so I'd like to hear your different approaches to your diet. Well, my diet now is pretty fucking basic because I'm I can only eat about four meals a day. And my appetite down. Like for breakfast today, I had eggs, uh, turkey bacon. Um, I had a sweet potato. Um, second meal, salmon and olive oil. Uh, my pre workout meal will be chicken and rice. Post workout will be an ice up here, and before bed, I'll probably do eggs and cottage cheese. So you're just eating protein all day, despite the kidney thing. Carbs. My carbs will are around training and in the morning usually only. And then you eat protein. Protein fat. <laughs> it's kind of a funny guy. He's like, why reduce protein? Why cut back? You didn't plan you didn't that. I reduced protein for three months and my kidney number stayed the same. So, uh, What about you, Andrew? What do you eat? I, uh, it's pretty basic actually too, but right now it's basically hard to get food in. So I'm trying to, I just eat a lot of, uh, a lot of oatmeal, oatmeal and protein shakes together, like uh, mixed together. Mm. Uh, cottage cheese, a lot of eggs. You like, still I eat find- a lot of protein too, huh? Not no, just not large amounts though. Mm. That's the thing. It's just small, like small meals. My carbs aren't carbs aren't too high either. I just my like I said, my appetite's horrible right now. Mm. So it's whatever, whatever I could get in, I get in. 
What's that? Leo, he has a new kidney. He could go high protein. Yeah, but why? why? We're all going to lose our kidneys. I am too. I'm not eating high protein because of my kidneys. Like, when you say high protein, what do you, what do you consider high protein though? Like over 80 grams. Yeah. See, they, even when I was in dialysis, they were telling me to get, I was able to get 120 grams and they're telling no, me. I know. I'm not saying over 80 grams is going to harm the kidney directly necessarily. I think maybe like over 150 or, or something like that. Yeah. I'm taking 80 just to limit also the growth factors in my body in general. So I could live longer because protein is a signaling molecule. It signals to your body to cell divide. And I don't want my cells to divide because they can only divide 40 or so times. Then they either die or become senescent, which is like zombie cells. So it's, oh, okay. it's a time race. When you take that growth hormone, when you make your cells divide, when you take leucine, when you take protein, you've only got a certain amount of time before all of your body starts malfunctioning. You're going to, you know, that's why bodybuilders look so old. I just made an Instagram post today. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that one. huh? But that's, but look at the other guys that are 50 years old. Also, you know, they look 70, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why it's because all the spells split and then some, you have to Google this thing called senescence. Everyone who's listening should learn about senescence. It's like cells become weird. They divide so many times, they lose their function, but they cause the body to keep secreting inflammatory cytokines to attack them. It's been shown in old people that if you inject their knees with a chemical that destroys senescent cells, even though they have no cartilage, they have no pain. It goes away completely. It's all the senescent cells causing that ache and pain when people are old. So all these bodybuilders that take a lot of growth hormone, eat a lot of protein, they're going to feel the most pain. And I do already, even just because when I was 18 till the time I was 28, I ate at least 250, 300, 400, 500 grams of protein every day. Even when I wasn't working out, I just got into that mentality. I just eat meat. You know, I always eat meat. And so I have aches and pains that I shouldn't have when I'm 30. It's because I've been putting that growth mode the whole time, you know? So let me yeah. ask you an honest question, Leo. <clears throat> You think Chad Nichols diets, I, I've calculated his protein intake on most of his diets, anywhere from 700, anywhere from 650 to 750 grams of protein in a day. I've seen Do you that. think that is, that is a reason why a lot of his guys end up with kidney issues? I mean, I'm sure it isn't, uh, I'm sure that causes kidney, uh, that will cause some people to get kidney failure if they do it by itself. So for like 15 years. That's the big thing is I, I've seen his drug protocols. There's nothing cra like crazy, crazy about him. You know, they're high, but they're nothing that nobody else is not doing. The only difference with him is I've never mm -hmm. seen a coach have their guys eat anywhere from 12 to 14 ounces of cooked protein seven times a day on top of other stuff. But it, it works because that's the, and it's no, it works. His guys grow, dude. His guys he grow. Gives, he gives people a lot of junk too. That's even really inflammatory on your body too. You know, like he, you know what he does, Andrew? I, I have his recent programs and stuff. He do, What he does is he has his guys eat clean most of the time in the beginning phases. And when their weight plateaus, he adds like muffins in every meal. And then and then uh, on the weekends, he has them do cheat meals every other meal. So it's a clean start to your diet. And then when your weight plateaus, he adds muffins, um, um, oh, okay. peanut butter jelly sandwiches. And then on after and then every weekend, it's a cheat meal every other meal. So low during the week and then on the weekend he just fills yeah, it's basically. never low it's just a lot of clean food and then on top and then once you hit that plateau phase number two is we're not gonna have you do three cups of rice instead of you know instead of loading you up with white rice we're gonna do two cups of white rice with your protein and let's just add a muffin to that yeah yeah it makes sense i honestly think it could be a little bit of luck that uh, people around chad happen to to you know die i mean maybe it's just they were genetically inferior and maybe some other ones will later i, I don't know if it's necessarily is. i've the seen also got, guy, he got, is the only guy with that high of protein yeah he has he, huge he's also got these people later in their career too you know so he didn't get them when they were starting yes. all these people You're right like, he never he so, never bring he never built someone he, he always, yeah so who knows what these people did beforehand to get yeah, to not so not so they're all older when they came there and not and NASA was taking a lot of advice from Milos. A lot of advice from Milos. I'm sure he took advice from everyone and was probably doing what everyone and taking everyone's it. advice and putting all their all their dope <laughs> cycles together, you know? I bet he was. I really think so. I should have asked Lee about Naso today. I forgot. That was one of the questions. Okay, so um so yeah, my my diet is um I, you know, my diet has been really, really crap for the last four months. I've gained uh, actually 60 pounds or 50 pounds. I'm 210 pounds or so of mostly fat. You can see my face and everything like that. I'm about to lose probably 50 pounds now. I've done this many times in my life. The reason why my wife started eating oh, a lot. 50 pounds to lose? 
I ha- well to become I'll become frail again, but like whatever. But but I was one hundred and 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 like sixty or so, and now I, I not now, but at the max I reached one hundred uh, two hundred and ten. And the reason, uh, probably two hundred or so. What I thought you were way less than that. How tall are you? No, I was, but I just got fat because my wife got pregnant, and then I just started eating whatever she was eating. You look like you're one eighty <laughs> max. I know. No, probably. I maybe I went back down. Maybe I was bloated that day that I checked. I don't know why I was. It was really high. But anyway, the point is, yeah, I've been. I was eating some really careless stuff. But uh, normally, what I eat, and now what I eat is, <clears throat> I have a. I make a big salad. Most of my clients, I try to get them on the a very similar salad, and I make it for four days or so. It's like a huge Tupperware container. It tastes like it's not a salad. It tastes adventurous. It tastes like you're visiting countries and experiencing different things. There's different flavors and textures and things like that. That's the only way I can trick myself into eating these salads. So I eat like bowls of those throughout the day. And then sometimes I eat liver with it. Sometimes I'll eat a little bit of meat. And then uh, at night, usually I eat uh, pecans with berries. Um, And this is the most, basically I've optimized my diet to include the most, the foods that are most associated with long life. You get along with that vegan doctor that uh, that I had a bad experience with. <laughs> <laughs> except, except I eat liver all the time. They they hate that stuff. They're they're upset about the animals. I just want to live long. I'm not, I'm not trying to do that stuff. But uh, so the next one is Patrick O'Rourke. He says, "What's the best unintentional side effect of a compound you've experienced?" Unintentional? Yeah, like something you didn't think was going to happen from this from the. The worst thing ever was that shit I told you about that amped the. Amped. <laughs> Where I told myself, I was like, you fucking idiot. So for the audience that doesn't know it, basically what Boston did was he injected the liquid in himself that tells his body he has zero ATP and zero energy and puts him in AMP kinase, which would be great if you're trying to live a very long time. But in the moment, he just has zero energy. Then he went to train. No, the worst part about it was I IV'd it. So it hit me immediately and I, I couldn't get enough oxygen in me. Yeah, I was gonna die. <laughs> what about you, Andrew? Honestly, I don't even know. I'm trying to think. The, the, for me, to give you an idea, for me, it was Trenbolone. Okay, I have two. Trenbolone gave me a very thick beard. I didn't expect that. Like Boston's beard right now, I bet he wouldn't have had that if he didn't use years of trend. That's that thick beard that gets weird when you use a lot of trend. You know, it just, it fills out everywhere. That's one thing. The second thing that happened was the first time I started using gear, I was 21 or 22. I was surprised that my that in the moment, your mine at least, my dick got bigger in the moment. So acutely, but a little bit, not that much, but I liked it. It was great. It felt like a heavy dick. Like it was very heavy because yeah. <laughs> the blood gets filled up. I made a video about it today about why that happens, actually. Androgen receptors make the nitric oxide feel better in the in the in the in the I thought it was the blood got thicker but anyway it felt like that it was cool and that stayed the whole time when I was on heavy steroids now a bunch of kids with micro dicks are gonna shoot gear <laughs> <laughs> it was equipoise that I was on but no they all do that they all do that really unless well yeah they all do that unless you take like a lot of trend or something and you're resistant to it it'll, it'll have a but these are small changes huh you can't really measure them that much uh, Abu Sakar, oh, he's an Arab. His name is Abu Sakar, the father of the falcon. He says, uh, which we say in my accent, Sagar. It's a very common name in my country. Actually, someone suggested when I thought I was going to have a boy that I named my son Sagar. But then I was going to say his name is the falcon, son of lion. It's like I have a, I have a wildlife center in my family. <laughs> so anyway, uh, he said, what's the most absurd cycle he's ever heard of? I mean, the harshest compounds, the harshest doses, period. Probably that one that um, that was said to me by somebody that um, that Matt Jansen was training in 2015. Matt Jansen won't do those dosages now, but he had a client that was on the verge of turning pro. He has pro quality, and he sent me the cycle that Matt wanted him on, and it was fucking retarded. It was like, I'm glad you said that because just today I was talking to some big YouTuber about Matt Jansen and his and what happened to Dallas because I posted that picture and some other things. Does the guy prescribe 15 units of GH or something like that? Is it like that? What? How much? You- For those top guys, yes. It is, right? Yeah, okay. That's what we For thought. For the top, yes, yes. Okay. So what was the cycle you saw? It was like 3,000 uh, MIGs of test, uh, like 1,000 MIGs of EQ or 2,000. It was something crazy. I posted it, Leo. Everyone was oh. going nuts over it. It was oh. 100 MIGs of D-ball, 100 MIGs of Anadrol, like 3 oh. grams of, te- of, of test E, a gram of SIP. On top of that, test suspension. It was a ton of <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. That's but a weird cycle. Person, 
this is when he was about to get a pro. This is when he first got on the scene in 2015, I want to say. So this is when, like, he was trying to get his name. And, like, now he knows better. He'll only prescribe these dosages to his top guys, yeah. So he so he does know to use the dosages. That's what's getting that Nick Walker. That's why, he, that's why your uh, that's why your buddy Trey Gilly called him out on uh, the podcast because he made a podcast with Fuad talking about his dosages and they were so wrong. So Trigilly, knowing what Matt has prescribed, got him on there because um, it's funny. Uh, Matt says he doesn't like to use insulin, but I I know my friends that have hired. I know, Matt. I know, I can see. The I insulin. know my friends personally that have hired Matt that has been on insulin. So he just said a lot of fucking horrible, misleading shit. No, you can see Walker's on insulin. There's no freaking oh, question about it whatsoever. He, he, he said he's, he doesn't use insulin? He says he doesn't believe in using insulin. Whoa, so he lied on the internet. Dude, I, I, thought, I thought you saw the video. I didn't realize yeah, I he said that. that. I did see it. I didn't realize he op- I didn't realize he said that. Op- so he lied. He says he doesn't believe in it. Maybe he's trying to protect people that are that are. Um, yeah, but you don't lie like that. I don't know. He should just say I have it only for my top guys. Yeah, he like should that. have said that. That's that's a that's really crazy. I just heard a podcast with him on it, and you should hear him like praising DNP, like it's the best thing, the safest drug. He calls it the safest drug out there. Safe really, Matt? Matt? Matt Jensen? Matt? Yeah, he's on a podcast with um, what's this guy's name? Fuck. Oh, jeez. If I was, I'll, I'll text you after. It's on my phone. I don't want to turn off the yeah. screen now. Yeah, but yeah, he did this podcast, and literally, it's an hour and a half of just DNP talk. Wow. And he's saying he's saying how healthy is he'd rather prescribe that than T three clan. Matt any of Porter, that. that's what Matt Porter did. He wouldn't have any of his clients on T three, but he would load them up on like a gram of DNP, and like a lot of people were hospitalized on it. And then he like changed his ways when when that guy when Matt Porter trained that guy that ended up dying. And then his fa- the guy's family went after Matt Porter. Matt that Porter- happened? What? Wait, wait, I've never heard of this story. Yeah, this is well known. I even oh, that's why yeah, MD crazy. took my video off. Matt Porter had a guy on a gram of DNP while doing high intensity interval cardio. The guy ended up dying. His family found out and went after Matt legally. I don't know what happened in the, in the in oh, the God. court case, but after that, Matt stopped all that. But the thing that Matt doesn't realize is when you use high doses of DMP or even small doses of DMP, it down regulates your T3 levels. I've seen it myself on blood work. When people run DNP without T3, That's their cool. thyroids get crushed. So it's smart to run just like a base amount, like 12.5 MCGs, just to keep you at a maintenance dose while you run DNP. And that was Matt's thing. Zero T3, crazy DNP. He would preach that DNP was the sa- way safer than T3 and that, and he would do it. And like I said, I'm not kidding you, Leo. Multiple people that I know have been to the hospital with wow. Matt Porter. Um, he a always, I, I, call, I called him out on it many times. I mean, Andrew, I don't know how long you've been following me, but you probably have seen when I called oh, him yeah. out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I, yeah, and he, I called him out before when he, I knew a guy that he uh, had this guy lose 24 pounds in one day to make weight, Leo, and the guy ended up getting rushed to the hospital. I mean, there's plenty of these stories. Uh, oh yeah, Matt Porter, the the guy, who, the coach who passed away. Correct. Yeah. The, um, when he passed away, that I, I, that's the first time I had heard of him, and I had heard that he was saying that he was like on, on TRT or something for like TRT years. and like thirty seven point five mg. <laughs> like I, yeah, yeah. Didn't he go on Dave's show years before? I didn't know if he was the same guy. Some guy went on Dave's show and had a debate where he was saying he was using very low doses, and everyone in the debate was like, "I don't." They didn't believe him. That was Is that him. the guy. That's him? Yeah. yeah. Oh, but he was huge I, at the end. He looked like he was on everything. I used to tease him. I would call him Mr. 37.5 MIGs of R because, and then he would lie and say the most trend he ever ran was like 50 MIGs every day. But then he would prescribe his clients like 150 MIGs of trend daily. It was just wow. crazy. Because when I saw a picture of him when he died, I, that picture is insulin growth hormone loaded up everything, loaded up as if that's his max genetics. That's just oh, what yeah. he. His genetics look- sucked. And, you know, I felt bad when he died because he has a kid that's my kid's age and nobody wants to ever see that. But before he passed away, me and him were were battling because he was putting a lot of bullshit on the internet. You know what I mean? Like, he would post IGF levels at, like, 500 and say he, he got this with, like, two IUs of growth and, like, just crazy stuff. I remember that. I didn't know it was the same guy. That's so crazy, dude. That's he had crazy. a heart attack. That's crazy. Those are some crazy stories. Okay, Kyle Deschamps asks, he says, Fouad had a guy on his podcast claiming tests should be no more. Oh, you saw that one with Broderick Chavez? Did you see it, Boston? Dude, I can't stand that. Oh, I, we can't. Oh, this is going to be great. Dude, Let's have it. Dude, hold on. Me and Dave just did a podcast today about it. 
Oh my God, really? I need to talk to, I'm going to, I'm going on Dave's tomorrow. I'm going to talk about it. 4 p.m. today, we already, we already did the podcast, but okay, you question. covered it for, you covered it well? Because that guy I is just. bash that fat fuck. He's ridiculous. I mean, anyway, okay. So the guy asks, he says, no more than three milligram per kg of testosterone per, for your body weight. And the rest of your cycle should be made up with DHT or 19 nor uh, testosterone compounds or related compounds. But most people, including Fahad, claim more testosterone is better for gains. Is there any science to this, Leo? So from the first, I'll let you answer after. But let's talk about it scientifically because what I what annoyed me about the guy and why I made these comments later, I also made a video. Well, I have a video with Mike Dolce and we we're talking about Broderick Chavez. And I was, well, I brought it up. I was just saying like, this idea of a guru, like guru, I mean a lie, or this guy's a coach, this guy knows, I'm a scientist, I'm a I have this degree. Fuck all that. Just tell us what is important. This guy comes to you and he says, this is the atomic structure. I'm going to tell you the, how this thing is. Do you know what's funny about all that? He was trying to trick the audience. The atomic structure doesn't have that much bearing on how the chemical actually binds to a receptor. So you can have two chemical structures that look almost identical. And one of them does something completely different that you would never expect. So dividing the classes into the way they look is what a child would do. When he looks at a chemical set, he would say, oh, these look different. No, but you didn't read. You didn't read about uh, receptors, about how, for example, quercetin, something found in onions, can activate the vitamin D receptor. There's such random things you would never expect. So for uh, I won't go into individual steroids because we don't know. We don't have the research on it. So this guy's trying to come from a science thing and uh, trick people and all this. That all is bullshit. What really matters is what works in real life. What exactly. we've tried, what works. And if you want to come from a science perspective, you're also wrong. You know, that's my point. And, and he it. also said so much dumb shit in that interview. Like the whole thing was, he said, he said, um, he said, nutrition is the least important part of Bob. Yeah. yeah. Part. Well, yeah, look I'm at like, him. Fuck. He's eating fucking chocolate bars. Or he, he's a day. fat fuck. And he says he, he, he was like, in the beginning of the interview, he's like, I don't want to talk about myself, but. And then he goes on a 10 fucking minute rampage about how smart he is and how he's like, how he's a great bodybuilder. So Leo, I actually know some of his clients that had worked with him and, and got rid of him. Really? They, they, went, they went, their progress went backwards. He, he keeps the testosterone super low. To, um, what does uh, he do? So he keeps the test super low. Like you were saying, like three Ks per body weight. And he bases all their gear dosages on body weight, whether they're fat, whatever. <laughs> so, and like he said in the video, never stack testosterone with EQ. Like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> oh, that one, that one. Yeah, yeah. He's like testosterone is like the anabol. So you could just take the anabol. You don't need this. <laughs> I was like, I was like, holy fucking shit. It's like, have you used the anabol, dude? Have you ever tried it? <laughs> if you want to see how shitty his clients are, just go to his Instagram and click on his tags because obviously they're not going to post all their clients. If you go to his tags, all of his clients that are working with him tag him and shit, and they all look like dog shit. So it's like it's like your practices are not working. But dude, I he trained a friend of mine for a show, and I'm not kidding you, Leo. This is crazy. He had his testosterone super low too, but guess what he had him taking in prep? What? Estrogen pills. Why? He says it boosts uh, muscle gain or, or yes, this is the kind of person I think he is. Oh, yeah, that's so. no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not kidding you. He had this guy on estrogen. Yes, yeah, so this is the kind of guy I think he is. He he thinks he reads something random because look, the, in the end, what I loved about him in the beginning of the discussion, he's like, I have a bachelor's degree in science and the, nothing else. By the way, he has a bachelor. He has an undergrad. He, that's all. He has an undergrad from a really bad school. And that's all. He basically is a normal guy. He's just, yeah. but he, but he mentioned it. He was like, yeah, I have this degree and I'm an expert and this is what I do. And also he says, I have famous clients. I formulate for supplement companies, big ones, but I can't say who. And he I have famous no clients, clients, but I'm the drug guy. So they don't want to say who I am. He has no clients on the pro level. None. No, but he, he claims that he's the drug guy. So they don't want to say who he is. Yeah. Yeah. What sport are you in? Is this the NFL? Yeah. Is, he, is, he, is he coaching NFL players? He's so full of shit, that guy, dude. I can't even handle it. And he has like he doesn't even have that many followers. He's just and then the, the the best part of me is he he's like I'm a humble guy. I don't like to talk about myself. But and then the whole podcast he talks about how smart. No, he is. bro, he's not humble. That's why he's never been on my podcast. People have asked uh, me to get him on my podcast so many times. I emailed him once the first two months. He was I emailed a very nice email. He responded with one line. He said yes, 
but his typos everywhere, like can't even, they're not even nice. I was like, fuck this guy. I don't even, I'm not going to learn shit from you. I was just doing it for these people. So, you know, but the thing is, look, what annoyed me also is this idea. You can tell when someone wants to learn and when somebody wants to teach, there's a difference. This guy doesn't want to have a conversation. He wants to tell you. He wants from a perspective of, I know, and you're going to learn from me. And I can tell you his clients, like my friend that worked with him for a show. First of all, my friend, I'm not saying this is his fault, but the guy, the kid that I'm talking about didn't even make it to a show. He ended up in the hospital. His, his I think his goal, yeah, his gallbladder uh, needed to be removed. It bursted on him. So he didn't even make it. He was in the hospital. That, that actually, that might be his fault actually, because he has well, some I'm weird not, things about fats. <laughs> it could be his fault. I don't know, but I'm not, you know, I'm not going to blame it on him because I don't know the details, but he was supposed to do the, the I think it was the Arnold. And he ended up in the hospital like a few weeks into it. Um, I mean, a few weeks before the show, he was in the hospital and he was all laid up. And uh, he obviously never made it to the stage, but he was working with Broderick. But I mean, dude, the, the thing is, is like when he told me that estrogen shit, he was like, oh, I'm taking only, I think it was only on, I think it was only like, two, it was only on like 200 mix of test and prep. And then I was like, what else are you taking? Are you taking anti-estrogen? He's like, no, I'm actually taking so-and-so. It's an, it's an it's estrogen. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, Boston, the thing is, you're laughing at it from a different perspective than me. You're laughing at it from a practical practical perspective where it makes absolutely the opposite sense. Make no sense. I'm laughing at it from a science perspective where it also makes no sense. And I realize why he thought it makes sense. And he's so stupid. Like, he's just he just doesn't take it out of college. He's just retired. <laughs> anyway, the reason why, by the way, audience, for, for the reason why I'm being harsh with him is just because he insulted. Dave on the show. I would have criti- criticized him, but politely. But he just insulted Dave for no freaking he reason. Ronnie Coleman too. Did yeah. he really? He said Ronnie Coleman was the dumbest fuck. He said. Are you serious? I didn't pay attention. Yeah, yeah I, I, I was when he insulted Dave. I was like, whoa, whoa, why are you doing that? Yeah, anyway, so so if he's gonna be like that, then we could be honest about him. Broderick, if Dave said he said Dave, not the third worst thing Dave ever said wrong. That's what he said. Dave, Dave's never. I talked to Dave about this today. Dave has never, ever recommended front loading. You know who does recommend front loading is Patrick Tour. He's an idiot. He got the gurus mixed up. He mixed up Dave, <laughs> threw Dave under the bus for something that Patrick does. <laughs> and you know what? And you know what? You know, Fuad sucks Patrick's cock on there. So if he would have said Patrick's an idiot, Fuad would have cried on camera. Oh, that would have went out. By the way, why does Fuad, why is he obsessed with Patrick and he has all the guys with Patrick on his show? Is it like, is he sponsored by Patrick? No, he just, he dick rides. He dick rides his athletes. You don't think they're sharing? It's interesting because it's almost like marketing for Patrick on that show. It is. I think um, think he's being paid. Ben Chow Chow and Patrick Tour do a, a, a live webinar where people pay like $10. And I think they're doing a marketing thing in Patrick. I think so. Little, I think so. Also, an interesting thing I realized, did you know that Ben Chow was dropped by that company in Florida because it Dra- looked like? Uh, he was with Dragon Pharma. Can't, yeah, but did, no, no. But now is he with Dragon Pharma? No, he's with a different company. But wasn't he with Redcon? He's with Redcon. Uh, they're, no, he, they're no longer with Redcon. Dragon Pharma then went to Redcon or either Redcon, Dragon Pharma, either one or the other. And then now he's with another company called um apex or something yeah but can you believe that redcon would dare drop him after luke died like that is a they really? actually brought him on board when luke died i think so when luke oh, died, okay. they brought him on yeah oh that's kind that's kind okay that's what that's what and hey i'll tell you what redcon didn't drop him he moved to a better position oh great okay okay i was just wondering okay good good because good. he designs products now for a different company and he they're paying him more he designs. He doesn't know anything about biology. That guy, uh, nothing. He has a he's, he has in his Instagram bio. Yeah, he, he always a- says that. But every time they ask him a question on the show, he doesn't. He says it's so funny. Yeah. Anyway, okay. So his bio, he says he's like a biologist or something. I know. There's so many biologists these days. So so um, Diogo Lopez asks. He says Boston. What is why? Why only Boston though? Maybe I would have an answer. He says, "What is the competitive bodybuilding physique that you admired the most?" I just pulled him up today. Andrew, you probably know this guy. Let me, t- let me tell you his name. Hold on. This guy is fucking, I love this guy. This, um, his name on Insta. Oh, the Sulos posted him. The, um, he's doing the Siberian. Who's this guy guys? Who's that guy? I have no idea. Well, yeah, I know you're talking about. He's, 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 he's like an elite though, isn't he? Oh, he's right here. Guy. Right here. Michael Crizzo. 
Wow. Isn't That's- he like an elite pro though? Elite a- pro, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's fucking <laughs> sick, huh? He's crazy looking. Yeah, I know. Crazy. He's nuts. crazy. I like How tall that is that guy? He's tall. He's my dude. height. He's six yeah, one, dude. Five. No way. He's fucking bad. That's crazy. How tall are you, Andrew? You tall too? Uh, six one, six one, six two ish. Yeah. Hey, lucky tall. Lebanese people because you guys are mixed with Romans. That's why. You know that the Lebanese are actually. I've done a lot of uh, research into the genetics of Lebanese. Actually, it's twenty five percent about Roman blood. In fact, really? in yeah. Lebanon, yeah, it's real. It's real. It's from the Crusade, not Roman. Sorry, the Crusaders. Um, it's it's actually uh, true. With what we used to think that there's Crusader blood, it's completely true. About twenty five percent. Yeah, twenty between twenty ten and twenty five percent of of Lebanese have from the father's line completely European uh, genetics. Just like my mother's side, and wow. like like from Britain and France, and they're mostly among the Christians, among the Orthodox, and the Maronites. So you're very likely mixed with them, also. Yes, definitely. And that's why, sense. and that's why we, it looks like in between our in between Saudis and Europeans. That's why Lebanese yeah, are yeah. exactly why. So, <clears throat> uh, and also there was a lot of mixture with the Romans when they were ruling Syria and Lebanon before. You know, there was yeah. even a Roman emperor called Philip the Arab, and he oh, was yeah. he was Syrian. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, he was a Syrian uh, Christian. Okay, so uh, we asked Diogo's question. Rockazoid says, is there any truth that, uh, to the idea that spot injecting before training a specific body part may improve gains? And before you answer the, from the real life, I want to say I really believe that theoretically there is reasoning to think it can because you're causing uh, inflammation in the muscle directly. And the inflammation in the muscle is not just like when you work out and you break muscle fibers, the repair of the muscle fiber is not just because you broke the fiber. It's also specifically because when you broke the fiber, the inflammatory cytokines from your immune system and all these other things activated to let you your body know you have trauma there to go fix it. So if you inject, you also cause the trauma. So that's why you not only may feel it more in the gym, but you may get more results. I don't know. It depends how much you're you're shooting, in my opinion. Um, yeah, that's what I was. But like, say. Well, like you said, Leo, anytime you shoot anything in the muscle, it's gonna it's gonna temporary infl- inf- inf- you know bring inflammation. So for the next you know few days for a week, it'll be be, be, uh, be bigger. And if you're building scar tissue with certain compounds that you know build scar tissue, then th- in that way you'll build muscle. Because even with synthol, a lot of the synthol results are built from a little bit of scar tissue too. Um, if you're only doing like a half cc, I doubt it's going to be long term. But if you're putting a good amount, I could see it working for sure. Hey, what do you think Rich Piana's arms were made of? I never I asked you. I already know that question. No, because Scott tells me something else than what most people say. And Scott was his 25-year friend. What's your idea? They, everyone has a different theory. I don't have an idea. He told me. Well, yeah, but he may have lied to you. He lied. He apparently he could have lied to me, but he was he he didn't want anyone else knowing. But what do you tell you? He said he went down to Mexico for PMMA injections every few often. Scott thinks it's an implant. He thought there were implants in some of the parts. He said he couldn't fit into the coffin. Scott put him in the coffin, by the way. Maybe, and he would no, Scott, Scott would probably know better than me, but I'm just telling you what Rich told me, what made sense, because Mexico's a lot cheaper. They, they charge you like hundreds and hundreds of dollars per cc's here, and you have to go like every six months. But he told me he was going to Mexico and getting the PMMA, PMMA Wait, shot. Do many people get it? No, because not. but I'll tell you, not in the U.S. because it's too expensive, but those Brazilian chicks – Though that have the crazy legs, they 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 all do it. I like their legs, despite knowing it's fake. Yeah. It, it looks good <laughs> on a female, but when a guy does it, it looks estrogenic. You know who has it? Uh, the guy who has it, Chul Soon, the Korean guy, the Korean bodybuilder Chul Soon. He's oh, the okay. guy. Oh, oh I got to cuts. He doesn't have any cuts in his legs. Oh, dude, this guy looks. It's so interesting. He's like a Barbie doll. If you, I'll send you a picture of him after. You, yeah, he, he looks so weird. By the way, I'm going to learn how to do what Fouad does, like look at pictures next time. <laughs> My wife told me apparently it's just on Zoom. You can just do it. But I anyway, I'll figure it out next time. So anyway, uh, Carbra asks, he says, I love Tren and love the results I get from it. However, I do get a bit irritable on it. If you ask my wife, very irritable. I tend to snap at minor things that I normally wouldn't. Do you have recommended supplements to minimize this? I do microdose. So that does help a lot, uh, a lot more than when I was doing one to two cc's a pop. By the way, one to two cc's. That's, I mean, that's not much. Anyway, what's a micro? So if you're micro, do you mean you're taking more than once a day or are you taking less than one cc a day? In which case, that's not that much, by the way. I felt horrible when I was taking like two milliliters or like 200 milligrams of trembolone. A day. I'll, I'll let Andrew answer that one first and I'll see if we're, we're accurate because he, he obviously likes trend because he said that causes kidney issues. <laughs> yeah. What was your best Honestly, approach? 
I did nothing. Like, you get irritated, you get irritable. You know, there's nothing. I didn't really do anything. I didn't microdose or nothing. I, I tried every kind of dosage too. I was up to a gram to fucking everything. You know, I tried, you try 300 a day. Fuck. Yeah. Oh, yeah I yeah, did. Yeah. yeah. To be honest, there was That's times I, much. Kind of, I was selling this stuff. So I'd just go into my fucking my little box and pull something out. Just like Boston would say, go to his little room. I just pull it out and pull full three CCs and <laughs> they want a good workout tomorrow. So I drive myself and I go for fucking go to bed. I remember when I used to do three CCs at trend. I used to fucking be so mad when I got the cough. Oh, uh, fuck, so yeah. fucking mad, dude. How about this? I'm invulnerable to the cough. I've never had it. I've injected three cc's I, of X into my shoulders, into my chest and uh, all kinds of places. Never I'll more than one injection. I'll send you some trend suspension. You can put it in your vein. You'll definitely cough. Actually, I'll tell, oh. tell you about that, though. I've never tried trend. Look, uh, there's some problems. I've never tried injectable Anadrol. I've never tried injectable D-Ball. I've never tried DHB. And I've never tried inject. I've never tried methyl trend or uh, a trend suspension. And I regret it now. And unfortunately, sometimes people are like, hey, do you want me to send you something? I'm like, uh, one shot, <laughs> what one am I going to do with it? <laughs> one shot won't kill you. Take it like prior to sex. It'll I just want to feel what it feels like. I want to know what, because listen guys someone's gonna ask later on in this section actually let's do the question now but and we'll go back to this question the nikki moore asks what's the half-life of tne i don't know what it is but he says what's the pro of using tne rather than enanthate incipient i wanted to ask answer this i swear i never really understood what testosterone was until i injected tne or testosterone suspension when you really inject that you feel really just testosterone you know what that feels like that is pure test. It comes in your blood freely. It lasts for a couple of hours and then it goes down. And if you inject two, 200 milligrams of 10 of uh, TNE or 300, you'll feel crazy. Like, but not quite the way a trend does. What do you guys think about the advantages of TNE? We'll go back to that. I used to get, I used to uh, do TNE and I think that was a big issue why my blood pressure was crazy because when I would shoot that shit, my blood pressure for the next few hours would go fucking crazy, right? Yeah. So TNE, I remember one time I even told you I shot like three CCs in my lap before. This was in like April of 19 or 20. Yeah, 20, April of 20, I told you I shot and you're like, you're fucking crazy. We were talking about it. <laughs> but um, I used to feel I used to feel the effects of drugs. I don't know if Andrew's like was like this. I used to feel the effects, but now, well, I haven't been on shit lately, but except for tests. Now, when I was experienced drug user, no matter what I shot, I didn't feel shit. Except trend suspension, I would get hot that's and sweaty. No, that's true. I also felt way less later. What about you? I was the same, man. I was exact same. At the start, I felt stuff, but towards the end, like I can take whatever I wanted to. I had no nothing. I wouldn't get anything out of it, you know, like no extra strength, no just more side effects, <laughs> the truth, you know? Yeah. Nothing. I wonder yeah. if that's but before before the kidney stuff happened, did you also feel like less of an effect? Because I also felt less of it. Like when I would take testosterone suspension, uh, like a TNE, 100 milligrams or 50 milligrams of Anadrol together, it would be just like a pre-workout. I mean, I would be very strong, but I wasn't like, uh, you know, going crazy or anything. That's the same thing. I would take it. I, I wouldn't feel anything. I would take them and just be, it'd be normal. You I would say the same. I felt absolutely nothing. Whoa, that's Except blood, my blood pressure would go through the roof like Boston said. Yeah, same my thing. blood pressure would go crazy though. <laughs> I'd go to the gym, I'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna kill it today. Like you're gonna lift all this extra weight. I let let the same fuck, you know? Yeah, I didn't get that. That'd be fucking red to the face, you know? Leo, can, that's when my kidneys went up to 2.0 when I was doing 50 D ball, 50 Anadrol uh, every training day. Yeah, but you were not I was doing this while taking the blood pressure medication. So I was while I was going to the gym, I was checking my blood pressure right before I go, and it would be 120 over 80. But I would be loaded up. I would be loaded up on everything, and then I would go, you know, do crazy weights in the gym, 405 uh, bent over row, shit like that at the, toward the end. Um, but so uh, it, it helped. Key. Maybe that's the key to stack it with a blood pressure med. <laughs> <laughs> that is the key. That is the key. That's what I've been trying to tell people and popularize. But back to this question of um, of trembolone. So how did you deal with it, Boston? The side effects. Trend, um, I don't I didn't get any side effects on trend. Ariella said I was less emotional. Like yeah. like more like in the zone, like like more of like a zombie. Like I'm never angry, I never raise my voice. So if anything, it calmed me down, it kind of made me into a zombie a little bit. That's that's interesting. That may be because of the neurochemistry of your brain. And my well, I told case, you the doctors prescribed me Zoloft and it did the opposite. Yeah, but that's a short-term effect sometimes from it. It it changes later. But um 
for me, so I'll tell you guys what I would do. If you want to have no side effects from Trembolone, you need to take drugs. Supplements won't work. And uh, you won't be able to get rid of all of the side effects because a lot of the benefits of trend come from the adrenaline, which is a non-genomic effect of the Trembolone, which immediately when you take it, you get a lot of adrenaline and that adrenaline actually makes you stronger and gain muscle, just like clenbuterol. So if you block that with propranolol hard, then you're not going to get all the benefits of trend. So you can't really do that. So what I would do is approach the main issue, which is sleep and serotonin. So number one, before I ever got on Trenbolone, I would slowly escalate the dose of my favorite SSRI, which is called fluvoxamine. I would start at 25 milligrams at night and slowly raise it to 100 milligrams at night. Then I would add 25 milligrams in the morning and slowly raise that to 100 milligrams in the morning. It would take me three months to reach that dose. When I reach that dose, I would wait six months. At the end of those six months, you will have a lot of neurogenesis in your brain. It only starts after about seven, eight months. When that happens, you will no longer feel... Uh, that kind of uh, crazy anxiety that you can get from, from Trembolone, it will be really lessened, really lessened at that 200 milligram dose. You can even go a little bit higher to 250 or 300 when you're on the cycle. Um, that will really change things, number one. Number two, I would use cerebrolysin because the, there will be a lot of neurotoxicity in your brain and the cerebrolysin seems to cause a delayed effect in the neurogenesis. So you're already on the SSR, your brain is already doing that. Once you're on the cycle, I would shoot cerebrolysin once a month, probably four days a month, five milliliters a day or 10 milliliters a day, something like that. <clears throat> That's the second thing I would do. Third thing I would do, instead of taking a benzo or something like that to sleep, I would do specifically one drug. Syroquil. It's also called quetiapine, and you can find it on Boston's forums list. That drug is between 50 to 150 milligrams is the perfect antidote for trans sleeping issues because it's also the way it works by putting you to sleep is not by making you relaxed. It's by turning off your dopamine, turning off your drive. So trend gives you a lot of drive also through adrenaline. So it turns that dopamine off, which doesn't affect your weight loss but makes you go to sleep. People are usually not used to Seroquel. So 50 milligrams will put them to sleep for eight hours, nine hours. You'll recover way better. And after your workouts during the day, I would take 40 milligrams of propranolol. That mixture is a perfect antidote and you'll I, be able to handle it. Well. I never, ever had sleep issues on Tren, ever. On 300 milligrams of Tren? Never. I never had sleep issues in my life. I sleep like a bear regardless. You're just a, you're just a relaxed yeah, guy naturally. It, my, it, it made me fuck with my sleep patterns. I would maybe sleep at weird hours, but I would always sleep at least eight hours easy. But would you sleep bra broken up like four hours? Never, never. It would just be weird hours. Yeah. When I was on a lot of trend and marijuana, I would end up sleeping like two hours, wake up for two hours, sleep for two hours, wake up for my, my day was so bizarre. That's what I was like. I was like that. You were yeah, like that too? Like, yeah. Like bizarre. People would come over yeah. and I'd be like, I got to go take a nap. Like, but I'd be like wide awake. I'd wake up at like two in the morning, be wide awake though, you know? And I'd be yeah, like, go to the computer, day. do stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Leo, <laughs> I got a question for you. What do you think about this? When somebody, I had a coach once tell me when I was on trend to take an antihistamine for my for gut issue. Uh, I was having a lot of indigestion. Mm. You, you're, you, what do you think about that? You make some sense? Uh, not particularly for indigestion, but an antihistamine is also a great thing to add on to the Seroquel for nighttime because it's a blocker. If you use Benadryl, which gets into the nervous system, it'll block the histamine one receptor in the brain, which is excitatory. And it'll, it'll allow you to use a lower dose of Seroquel and it's not GABAergic. So it's not going to get you addicted to anything. It's very nice, uh, very useful drug, but I don't think it'll, if you're having oh, indigestion. Sleep, no, hold on. I know why he said that, Andrew. He, he wanted you to get periactin probably from Canada because it's over the counter, right? Maybe. I'm not, I wasn't sure exactly what he said that I, well, I had. A, I had a guy that I think it got seized. That I think it, my package got seized, but I actually know a guy in Canada that just sent me some periactin because it's over the counter there. I guess they just made it a prescription drug, but it used to be. Periactin is the number one thing that George Farrell likes to use um, and sometimes Chad Nichols likes to use. It's an antihistamine. The one side effect, like Leo said, is it makes you tired as fuck. But once you take it for like two weeks straight, the tired symptoms kind of diminish. But Andrew, it makes you eat like a fucking horse. That's why he oh, said it'll awesome. help with your digestion. Ah, I wanted you to be really hungry. Awesome. Fascinating. Uh, is that their favorite uh, uh, drug to make them eat? Uh, uh, George Ferris, number one is periactin. Um, Chad Nichols, his number one is Marinol, but it's impossible to find. And he also likes to use periactin and, and Megastrol as well. 
So um, Garrett Hooper asks, could you and Boston theorize why nearly all high-level bodybuilders have extremely blatant umbilical hernias? All, always wondered myself. Thank you and best wishes. Are they saying I have a hernia? No, 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 no. Are, do you? Oh. No, he's saying why do all top-level bodybuilders have hernias uh, above their belly button? I was about to say I didn't think I had one. Um, I think a lot of it is with, from coming from heavy training, straining and shit. Well, I don't think so because I mean, Eli had three hernias, and all he does is use GH. He's never lifted a weight, I think. He does quarter reps. He's a quarter no, rep. He, no, he's. Not, I don't think he lifts weights, but he, but he, but he used a lot of GH. You don't think you lift, you don't think you lift weights in that contest prep? You think you just took drugs? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think he lifts weights, but he probably lifts like to a fifteen pound dumbbells or something like that. I, he's a very like he's a very weak spirited person, like generally. But, but anyway, the point is, um, he's had three hernia surgeries. And he just uses growth hormones since he was 15 years old. He thinks it's good for him. That's why his head is so big and his body's so big. Why make a GoFundMe for his hernia surgeries? <laughs> <laughs> he made one. He made one. He just put on his uh, on the kid. But it's not his kid. You know where that money went, by the way? Do you know where that money went? I kind of feel bad in a way, but after the stories that I know about him, I can't feel bad because he's always super nice to me. Like, he commented on my kid's photo saying, oh, he's adorable or he's, something like that. He's, or he's very scared of you. He's very scared of you because you brought him up a long time ago. He's very scared of you. And he, when I was working with him, he was always like trying. You remember, you didn't want to meet him. And I tried to like, he was like, when we go to Florida, maybe I'll just stop by and say hi to Boston. I was like, bro, you he, he don't just, he doesn't want you to go. Like, you can't just. Yeah, and like, in fact, <laughs> I was at, he was training the guy who ended up winning the, the super heavyweight class at uh, Nationals. And I went down there and he told me he was going to be there. So I sent him a text. I said, Hey, are you here? He's like, Oh no, I was scared of getting COVID. And like I said, it's just the stories that I know about him. Withdrawal. He had withdrawal. That's why he yeah, won't yeah. go. Well, he, he told me COVID scared him. Yeah. No drugs. That's whenever he doesn't show up drugs, I've flown to places to meet him and he didn't show up and I bought him the ticket. Like he's, he's not, he's very unreliable with it. Now that I hear that he's such a drug, about a few years ago, I, w I went to hire him. All right. For a coach. He calls me. He wants to charge me five thousand dollars for a prep. That's I told American, you. so that's like eight grand Canadian. You know, it's like I'm like, and this is like a regional show. You know what I mean? Leo, and then I tell you, when I told him no, you know what he did? He kept calling me to like to try See, to that, just get me on. You yeah, know? Like, that's like, the thing. He'll he'll start to negotiate with you. Because yeah. I was like, no, I'm like, I, I'm like, I'm this is a local show. Like, I don't need an eight thousand dollar coach here. You know? Yeah. And he would call me back or send me a text. You know? Andrew, how you doing? How's your prep? Andrew, he tried to give me, he tried to offer me free training. I was like, I mean, uh, I, sorry. Like I was nice about it, but I was like, no, thanks. Because he tried, because he knows he could use me for marketing. Then another one of my guys that I know reached out to him. He wanted to charge him a thousand a month for off season. That's the highest I've ever heard any coach charge. I charge 1000 a month, by the way, but by it's the way, it's a lot different than bodybuilding. Coaching. Yeah, that's because I don't train. I just only train high net worth individuals and only t 10 people. And I don't, uh, and like, I only want 10 people. I have a wait list. 1,000, but, but not for a year. Not for a year. They can, uh, like, it's for, you know, uh, what, whenever they quit, they can quit and come back or whatever. It's wait, just a, th a thousand a month. Yes. But what do you mean they could quit? Like, it's not for a year or for anything. Like, it's if they want to hire me for a month, it's a thousand. And I'm available yeah. all the time and I do the whole program and everything. Bodybuilding coaching is a lot less uh, extensive than what you're doing. Uh, yeah, There's I think. no coach out there that charges as much as a mean. He's absolutely nuts. But I talk to them for an hour every week on the phone. Awesome. Did yeah. you guys every week. see what Greg Doucette charges? Yeah, he charges. Charge? But, but he's like me. He takes. So let, let me tell you guys what happens. When you go on YouTube and you have a big channel, you start because there's a lot of people, you get so many requests. So you physically, unless you're going to be a bullshit coach, you either make a huge wait list and keep your prices very low or you raise your prices. Uh, either way, you're going to get the same number of clients. So, for example, like there are YouTubers, their consultation call char uh, charge price for half an hour is $1,000. 1000 yeah, for half an hour. What is, what and is they have that offering you for that? How much does know? Greg charge? Hold on. How oh. much does Greg charge? Greg charges, like, I think, 1400 for, or he charges 1000 Hold on. It, it's like 20, it's, it was 36000 for a year, but it was, he put it on sale for 24000 No, bro. One hour on the phone with him is 1000 already. Yeah, that's just on the phone, but like for coaching. Yeah. yeah. It's like 1500 bucks a month or something like that. And he's not. You guys I, you I, fucking guarantee, French toast and shit? I guarantee he's not even involved. Is he involved, a coach or no? No, I doubt it. I doubt it. 
Uh, we don't know. Nobody's ever heard of his clients at all. I think they're like uh, high net worth individuals that like Nobody's him. Nobody's going to hire him for that price except for rich, rich, rich people that don't care about money. No, bro. That's they exactly are, what it is. The people that hire people like that are billionaires. That's what they are. They're billionaires. They know you know. They know you. They've seen you. They know you know. They don't want to worry about anything. They're like, listen, dude, handle my shit. And they don't I know care. People, I know a few people that Greg offered free coaching to, though. I'm sure he would want anyone. Like that. Like that. Andrew, you probably know that Brandon Harding guy that was trolling him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he he coached him, and then Brandon left him. I think, I think, I don't know. Yeah, that. he left, he he left he him. Yeah, coach. he said he was a shit coach. <laughs> yeah, I think he would try his to. Diet change. is like his diet's the weirdest food. It's like those fucking. He makes like popcorn with your chicken and popcorn, and he, he makes French you buy and shit. Food. He teaches you how to how to eat for cancer. Like if you yeah, want to look, if you want to be low body weight but still get cancer, this is the way to do it. You can eat just like exactly. It's a shortcut. It's a shortcut. Just you know, it sells to the uh, everyday population. You know, it does who wants to keep junk and think they're going to lose weight? But exactly. So it doesn't so work like that. My theory on the hernias, honestly, is the growth hormone. Um, I used a, lot of, a little bit of growth hormone in my early twenties, and then I squatted. I mean, I deadlifted tons of times, five hundred pounds when I was seventeen years old. I never had a hernia. Then once I just went to the gym. Within two months, I hadn't been lifting weights. I squatted five. I mean, I deadlifted to five hundred pounds, and I got a hernia, ingroinal hernia. Had to go to Cedar Sinai, get a surgery. Got it done. At the time, I wasn't on growth hormone, but I believe it was because of that time I was younger and I took a lot of uh, experimenting with GH15 stuff. So I believe that personally. And I do think growth hormone causes unusual growth in the GI tract. And just that growth over time with the food and all of that stuff eventually causes the intestines to poke out. And in, in addition, the collagen that's joining the abs because of the hormone relaxin starts to weaken and then it points, po pokes out through the collagen. I was going to say, Leo. My my well, abs. Like, the bodybuilders have that big gap in the I have I have one inch. It's because of that. I have that too. Yeah. Yeah. From the definitely from GH. Definitely. Yeah. From yeah. the G when I was high heavy heavy dosing, that's when it happened. I know. I it. never had that when I was younger, and then as I no. yeah, it split so exactly, it and that yeah. and do you feel it when you poke it there? It feels like there's no strength. Like someone could yeah, stab you, you it goes right it's, through. Almost stick your finger through. Yeah. It's bullshit, man. I was always thinking I have like a kryptonite. You know, if someone wants to, <laughs> if someone just pokes me in the right stab place, you right there. <laughs> It's like pregnant women get that. It's the same thing they get, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's called, um, yeah, it's the linea alba that splits. I forgot what it's called. Are you talking called. about that big ass gap? Are you talking about that big ass gap that Dallas McCarver had? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Dallas had like a, like a three inch one. It was huge. Right, guys, yeah. I'm, I'm about to inject some peptides on camera, okay? okay. <laughs> this is very, very welcome. So, um, so, so Stephen O'Connor, the tattooist, asks, is bodybuilding a dead end sport? What's your opinion? Well, what's your opinion, Andrew? Because you really went into the sport before Boston because Boston's busy. Honestly, nice fridge, by the way. I like the lighting. Good Unless man. you got the genetics to go somewhere, it is, you know, like these days with Instagram and stuff, no one's making big contracts. So unless you got elite genetics, it takes you nowhere. And most people I know who leave bodybuilding end up with eating disorders, bad, bad uh, relationships with food. It's just, it's a mess, you know, bodybuilding. It's a fun sport to be in, but if you're trying to take it all the way, unless you got the genetics for it, there's, I don't think there's a, you know, there's a point you can work out, eat, live the lifestyle, but to commit everything you have to it, it's not, it's going nowhere, you know, unless you're the, on the top elite top five or 10, you're not making much money. You know, you can work a normal job and make the same amount. Andrew, can I ask you, like, what's the point of a guy competing in, I mean, unless he really loves to wear a bikini on stage and compete in bodybuilding, but what's the point of competing now? Now, we grew up in a different time. Like now, if someone is 15 years old, he can just work out and open an Instagram, open a YouTube, and you'll be more famous yeah. than any bodybuilder. So he doesn't need to enter the NPC or enter, he doesn't need to go to the Mannions. He doesn't need their approval. The Mannions don't matter actually anymore. Yeah, like, that's the thing. It's nothing, nothing matters anymore. Now, yeah. if you want approval, you can post it online. Exactly. So you just lift. There. You don't really have to do the the whole thing, really. What that's, do you think? That's, kind of, that's my new outlook on life kind of right now. I'm just like, you know, I still, I love the bodybuilding and stuff, but that's just like, that's way behind me now. Now I'm just trying to be healthy and just enjoy lifting, you know, and enjoy life. Yeah. But it's Take going my nowhere, life. you know? 
You have to take my lifestyle. You have to approach it like me. You did your. I want, you, I want it. I want to learn. I want to learn some more. Just staying healthy, you know. Yeah, you did a hundred percent in one thing. You did a hundred percent when you lost weight, just like me. I became very thin. You lost. You did a hundred percent when you're bodybuilding. You do a hundred percent now that you need to live for your family. That's what I do. I just, I need to learn my eating more for the health and eating my bodybuilding. You know, I'm exactly. still on that chicken. That's and what rice I was gonna say earlier stuff. when you were telling me your food. I was thinking, you know, I was gonna say, but I didn't comment. When we eat like we used to eat. We don't know yeah. how to eat. When we stop, it's like, what am I going to eat? It has to be protein. And what am that's I going to eat? Exactly. If I, if I you have to learn how to eat. With that's it. Uh, that's, so that's, that's my problem is just learning to eat normal, you know? Yeah, like, like what do I put in it? If it's not protein, what no am protein, I going to eat? It? Like a cow? I don't going to graze? Yeah. Exactly. I know what you mean. That's so why I had to work so hard. I'll talk to you with some tips, though. A kid, a kid. That's why I had to work so hard to make the salad adventurous. That's why I was saying it's like, because I don't want to feel like a cow eating grass. I, I, when I was a kid, I used to look at people eating salads and I used to think like, these, they're like, I mean, I used to judge this, them. Yeah. I used to judge yeah. them. I would be like, what are you doing? This is so lame. But anyway, so what do you think, Boston? Is it a dead end sport? I agree with him 100%. Unless you, unless you have the genetics to be a Phil Heath and make money competing, it, it's absolutely pointless to waste your time. And even now I'm starting to come realize that I do this because I love it and it's my hobby and it's all I really know how to do. And I have a goal of being big. I want to be big. And a lot of it, obviously, obviously I think as us as bodybuilders, it's an insecurity. You know, we, we want to be known as these big people. Um, but other, as far as bodybuilding, I would recommend if you don't have those genetics, I would not waste a lot of time and money on it for sure. The, the, um, okay. So Sean asked two questions. First, he says, are people who don't come off gear, like they stay on 125 to 300 milligrams of testosterone, actually shortening their lifespan? And then he says, does going down to zero test for eight weeks do anything better for you health-wise than cruising? I really wanted to comment on this. I want to let you guys know. So the reason to go to zero is only for two reasons. Either you're trying to go off completely or, yeah. You're either trying to go off completely. You're not even trying. You would never go to zero just because one day I want to have kids. So every year I'm going to go to zero for eight weeks. That's not going to help you. If you want to have kids one day, take HCG the whole time. That eight weeks will do nothing for you. Now, if you're thinking I'm going to do it for your health, you're actually going to harm your health a lot. When you go completely off, you cause really dysfunction in your body, a lot of inflammation. Your body has no test, so much stress on it. If anything, you should go back to the normal dose and then go back up. Why would you go to zero? You would go to zero because you want your receptors to be fresh, the androgen receptors, so you can feel all the drugs, so you can get the most gains. If you're going to do that, what you want to do is at the end of your cycle, instead of taking long esters, start taking less long esters and more short esters. Cycle, move it over to short esters, and then instead of taking eight weeks off, you're totally short estered. Stop all of a sudden. The next day, you take mifepristone. 300 milligrams a day, you stay at mifepristone for one week or two weeks, you've blocked all your androgen receptors, glucocorticoid receptors, progesterone receptors, your body thinks you have no hormones, you don't need to stay on for two weeks, you can stay on for a week. Your body thinks you have no hormones, everything upregulated, it won't go as much as eight weeks, but it'll be like four weeks. Very efficient. Then you go back on cycle if you want. You want to be efficient. One of the biggest guys you do this I know, every so often. Leo, one of the biggest guys I know, he was huge at even 19. He did, uh, I don't know if you're going to agree with this, but he did six weeks on, three weeks off his whole career. And what I mean is he, he ran six week cycles and he would come off everything for three weeks. And then he said he would get back on for six weeks, come on. And the guy would continue to grow. And I, I think he wasn't off long enough for them to fully crash his t test levels. And then he would get right back on. Like he kept responding. So I don't know if there's a, if there's a theory to that. I really believe so. I really believe the most efficient bodybuilder will want to do what I just described. They want to do like eight, uh, nine week blasts and they will be using short esters and then switch to the Smith Pristone one week, make everything re-regulate, go back up. Because when I use the cycle, it's not just that your inflammatory system, your immune system might be getting rid of what you're injecting. It may be recognizing it and getting rid of it, but also as a foreign invader, but also just the androgen receptor feels there's too much there. So the more you, you, you do that, the more refreshed you get. Like how that's long, how we. How long would you come off for? I said I said two two weeks, but really I would do it for like a week with mifepristone, which is a blocker of the androgen receptors. So instead of feeling a little bit, you feel zero. When this bodybuilder I'm talking, but about, your heart is fine. The reason your heart is fine and your body's fine. You know what I mean? He was a bodybuilder in the '90s. When he told me that, I I almost wanted to try it, but I don't think mentally I would, I would be able to come up with three. I'm not kidding you. This guy was a pro. He was like everything in six weeks on. 
He would do three weeks short Esther, three weeks long Esther, come off for three weeks and then go back to three weeks short Esther, three week long Esther, then go off. It would do, I'm telling you, he said he never plateaued that way. That's, and that's not a bad plan. What do you yeah, think? No, I've heard of that. I may try it. I may try that shit. Obviously, if my kidneys don't go out. Yes, to add the footnote after so people don't oh, get mad at him. Leo, I'm down to one blood pressure med. And it's and is it under control? I don't know. I haven't checked. <laughs> <laughs> so so Boston keeps messaging me. He's like, listen, Leo, I have a plan. I'm gonna I'm gonna reduce these. There's too many medications here. There's too much going on. I'm like, okay, Boston, listen. So is your blood pressure on the right track? He's like, I don't know, but I think I'm gonna get rid of these two. Why? No, I think it's better if I have one medication. I said, Okay, fine, but you don't have the right one. He said, No, I'm getting Valsartan. I'm like, no, 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 no. We talked about Azil Sartan, the strongest one. If you're gonna use one, he's like, hmm, no response. Day goes by. I message Dante. <laughs> no, no, Leo, you're crazy. You're crazy. I did. I did message. I did order those on all day, except they Azul? fucking. They didn't shit. Yeah, I told you that they didn't shit. I I got Azul Sartan and Herbisart. Herbisart, the great. I did buy them, but the thing is, uh, is they didn't ship my order, and it's been a week. So I had to contact them, and they were like, "Oh, they were like, if it doesn't ship or whatever, contact." So I had to contact them again, and they said they're going to ship it EMS shipping, speed shipping. Oh. Good, good, good. Yeah, because they've been shipping from Singapore. It's been coming well recently. And the second question he asks is, why is Nick Trigilli wearing a white coat in his HRT clinic ads? Which is a good question. And Lucy was asking me that also, honestly. So I, I just... That's, that's your best friend. That's a- <laughs> <laughs> No, Nick is... I just want to tell the audience, Nick likes... He's, he's very excited. He's really excited about the project and he's, he's enjoying himself. He's taking pictures and stuff. Does he, does he live in Florida? I don't know. I don't. I think he's visiting uh, Florida still, setting up the shop there. He's doing like training, and he's he's becoming a nurse. So maybe of. maybe he could prescribe me my thyroid medication. Oh, they could prescribe you anything. They prescribe the Anabol. They could prescribe maybe Anadrol. My thyroid shit. Maybe I'll go to him. Yeah, absolutely. I, oh, he would love to. Yeah, yeah. Message him. He re- he really would. Yeah, they have the th- whole set of thing set up. Um, so you think you'd send me? You think you'd send me real stuff? Yeah, I think he would. But they're, yeah, I think he would. But they're compounded in the in a pharmacy. They're, they're drugs like the Anadrol and Dianabol. They're Chinese, but they're compounded in pharmacy. I think I'm not sure about Nick's, but in general, they like that. So a new cold asked for Boston. Does Boston's forum have sources for Canada or just the U.S.? Well, we have I a have, Canadian guy. I here. have a top Canadian source on there that I use yes, stuff. Yeah, Andrew can come. Have you used his stuff, Andrew? Yeah, I just got just got some in actually. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, he's really good. I get my stuff from him. Unfortunately, the last two packages I got from him got seized, and I was annoyed because guess what was in those packages? What's the that? Fuck, uh, those those eight megafedrins you guys get legally over there. Oh, really? Fuck, you get man, a those shit are cheap around here, man. They're a couple, they're they sell them everywhere. Dude, they're cheap as fuck. He sent me like ten boxes, and they got seized. You know what? Also, he sent me was that one. I know that I know Leo would love this drug. He sent me some uh, Tiapam sodium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get that shit. Ty- that what's Tiapam? Tianap- oh, Tianaptine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've tried that one. Yeah, because of Nick. Because of Nick, the commenter. That he was. <laughs> anyway, it's a long story. But did you, did you get high on it? Yeah, I, I tried it very hard for him. He, the poor guy was addicted to it. I wanted to know what he was going through. I used to take it on leg day once a week, and, and it was one of the closest things I can get to Nubane. Yeah, it's, it's an opiate, and it's also it's also like ketamine. It blocks the NMDA receptors, very similar to that. So I have some in liquid form, but yeah, I, he said. And what I what do you think? What do you think caused the seizure? The ephedrine or the or the tiapam? The the ephedrine. You got yeah. a seizure? I it never came in. It's been like a month. Oh, the seizure of the drug. Oh, I thought you got a seizure. Yeah, he sent me a ton of trend suspension. Right? Oh, the tianeptine. The tianeptine is uh, is controlled. The ephedrine, I don't know. The U.S. is very controlled. So yeah, the U.S. is very controlled. Uh, very controlled. Yeah, very controlled. Yeah, I think probably that. So check this out. He sent me a ton of, um, what's that one thing called? By the way, the fucking, your your uh, EPO came in like this. Yeah. Well, but if, I would uh, love, if I would, ephedrine doesn't come in, let me know. I'll, I'll repackage it and I'll just send you some more and some oh, other yeah, packages. Oh, yeah. I'll send you whatever it costs. Let me know. Yeah, 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 let me know if it doesn't come in all, anytime. Well, this yeah, is some no, real talk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, this is the non-fraudulent bodybuilding podcast. For real. Yeah, this is, this but, is the real deal. <laughs> so they, they seized a bunch of trend suspension, right? Uh, and I was pissed. I wanted to cry. And, and they were like, they say on the seizure letter, $900 worth. I wonder where they come up with that shit. Like, we're, how, <laughs> man, how, the police are, listen to this, man. Okay, when I, I used to go drive. I had a meal prep company and I used to drive to meet Antoine. Like when he, when he first got out of rehab, I was bringing him a bunch of free food and stuff, you know? 
Yeah. I, I had, so I had it in my car. I had like a Ziploc bag with a couple D balls, some clan shit. I was going to, cause we were going to go train. So I was going to take them before I got pulled over on the way. Cops see the, the bag of pills, bro. They charged me for possession of methamphetamines. All right. Cause they thought it was speed or something. I actually went, I had to go to court. They got them tested. And then they came back and they're like, the judge's reading is like, you have Anadrol, D-Ball, fucking Clem. But it read the percentages. Like, it showed that all my shit was legit. It was like, this was 98% Anadrol. You know, I was like, sweet, my shit's you legit. Got, you, got, you, got, you got free testing. Yeah, I know, man. But, yo, I could drive back and forth to Montreal to go to court because I got arrested in Montreal. Uh, so I had to go back and forth. It was fucking hell. What's that's how crazy they are here. What's it's legal the- here? Here it's uh you you don't there's it's called a schedule four. It's a, oh, a really? schedule. So yeah, there's no charge for it. They just throw it out. That's like, that's like that's like uh, Oregon now. Oregon may just made steroids legal. Yeah, you could basically it's just illegal to sell it. You can't the make problem profit is, on. Who wants to move to Oregon now? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, if, hey, if I would move to Oregon if it wasn't so damn liberal. Yeah, I know. I would be there too. I was thinking it when they were legalizing the drugs. Both me and Lucy were like, we should move there, but the people, we don't want to get the people, people out yeah. of there. <laughs> if the people of Colorado were in Portland, it would be awesome. Like Colorado people are so they're liberal too, but they're so they're easy to get along with and you know, not so extreme. I was born in Colorado, by the way. Okay, so uh, oh by the way, I was gonna mention Boston's sources really are amazing. I, I know one of them by chance, by accident, I got to know one of them. They're very solid. Uh, these guys are all amazing. Also, I really would like to try some erythropoietin. I just thought of that. That wouldn't mess anything up and would be very useful for me, actually. So I may try that. Anyway. <clears throat> are you anemic? Uh, no, but erythropoietin has amazing effects in the brain and I'm already going to be bloodletting. So I would like more of the eryth- the growth effects of the erythropoietin. Since I'm already letting my blood out, it won't affect me much. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, he said for Leo, if people, if some people are born naturally strong, like the first time they ever lift a weight, we just got one question left after this one. If they ever lift a weight and pull hundreds of pounds uh, and some people are naturally weak, can the weak ever catch up? So I can talk from experience. I'm naturally weak. The first time I ever, well, I had lost like 60 pounds. I was young. I was like 15, 16 years old. First time I ever went to the gym to, to lift weights after losing weight. But I, I started powerlifting. So the first day I went in, I went to get my maxes. So I know my max deadlift was like 150. I know my max squat was like 115 pounds, something like that. I know my max bench press was below 100 pounds. So within one year, I was uh, one year and a half. I was already at 500 pound deadlift and 400, uh, 400 pound squat, just below 500 pound deadlift. And, 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 and that's, I thought I was good. I thought I was, oh, I'm online. I'm studying steroids. I'm going to be, I can, I can make myself into a monster one day. I could become a thousand pound squatter or something like that one day. And I forgot about it. Then I got lost into college. I did all kinds of other stuff. And then I got into arm wrestling. Now, when I got into arm wrestling, I wasn't in Dubai anymore. I was in the United States. And so I go to arm wrestle here and I join Scott Mendelson's club because it's the closest one to me. So I become friends with Scott Mendelson, who is a true athlete. And when I saw Scott Mendelson work out and I worked out with him, then I realized, oh my God, what the hell? Are th- this is not what I should be doing. <laughs> I realized that I'm not in there. Th- just seeing how Scott gets into him, like how he moves his body. It's what I never understood the term before, but it was what I call physical genius. He just has an understanding of his body. It's not even the muscular strength and power that is unbelievable, naturally, that you cannot compete with no matter what. If they start strong, they're always going to be stronger than you if they continue to do what you do. Because there are genetic factors, and I'm looking at a lot of them, studying them personally myself. So there are, for sure, I'm right about that. But the physical, just when you see somebody with that kind of talent, I don't know if you can appreciate this, Andrew, from bodybuilding, because it's different. But like in, in terms of actual sport, like I've gotten on the table. I was talking about Scott, but in arm wrestling, same thing. I can get on the table with people. I was very strong, very. I could uh, bicep curl, 90-pound dumbbells easily. I could 140-pound dumbbell curl on a preacher a preacher bench uh, more than halfway easily wow. with one arm. But I get, and I could uh, do wrist curls with like hundreds of pounds. But I get on the arm wrestling table. There are some guys, they're just strong weirdly. And there's yeah. nothing. And I look at this guy, I'm like, man, I'm on steroids. You're natural. In arm wrestling, it's different. It's different than bench press and stuff like that. Natural people can beat a guy on steroids. And I was just shocked. And that that's when I realized, okay, I was like, I'm 30. I got into this. 
I was planning to compete really highly and I was competing, but then I was like, you know what? I, I just, this is not my thing. It's just stupid. It's stupid for me to do this because I'm not built for this. Even if I yeah. love, maybe I'm built for, to help people learn how to do it better. Like what I'm doing now, but I'm not built for doing it. I'm not that, you know? So what's your guys' opinions on, on natural talent? Like, not, not about strength, but about everything. In terms a of, lot of it is like, like you're saying, it's almost genetics, like how they're built, you know, it's like the leverages in their arm, like everything. Did you and, feel, but did you ever like when you, when you were around Antoine or some other pros, did you ever like realize this guy can just get way bigger? Oh than yeah. 100%. There's no way I can compete with this. I'm not in the, you know what? Did you ever feel that? Man, the guy was fresh out of rehab and he was still just fucking pushing four or five plates on the bench. I'm not even lying. Like wow. he was fresh out of rehab and he did four, four plates in a quarter on the bench. He, he bench, he's that strong. I didn't know he was uh, very strong. Antoine's really strong. He's a fucking animal, man. And in the gym, he, he's wow. a good, he's strong in the gym. Like, he's, wow. like, he looks like he jokes around all the time, but when he's training, he's fucking serious, you know? Wow, incredible. No, I respect him a lot. He's a, he's a really, really good guy. That it's, he also, jokes around a lot and acts like a goofball, but he's, he's a really good guy. Oh, I was going to tell you, like, I have such respect for Antoine. I, I probably other him and Chris Bumstead are my maybe my favorite competitive bodybuilders. But but Antoine really special before his addiction and his recovery. I watched his videos when he uh, made those videos after his recovery. I mean, I'm such a fan of his. It would be like um, a dream come true to have him on the channel one day to talk about his recovery and stuff like that from one addict to another. For you. I'll, I'll send oh, a message for you. Yeah. From one addict to another, because because I understand some of the stories and, and I could get maybe a different kind of interview from him than another bodybuilder interview you know yeah we're no he's, he loves sharing the story too so. bodybuilder you're going to interview leo the, the one that we talked about which one the 212 guy 212 guy zane, zane watson oh you told uh, did i you told me to interview him right yeah and you told me he said he agreed with it you remember the story i told you about him and fuad oh yes he did agree i forgot I forgot, I forgot to reach out to him. Oh my God, it's so true. Yeah, Zane Watts. Okay, I, I, I've heard only good things about him. Yeah, and you know what's funny, Andrew, is I've only heard really good things about Antoine, and I think he's funny, and I, I like him a lot, and I have never really talked to him at all, but he hangs around some real fucking people that are that have some bad stories, like Dorian Hamilton and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, bad people, that's the thing. Antoine's very loyal, like, those guys helped him out a lot. So he's very loyal to them in that, that sense. You know, they brought him from nothing basically to they, cause Antoine was really popular back in the day when he was young and then he fell off and these guys kind of brought him back. They put a house over his head and shit. So he's got respect for them. So well, I'm sure he's loyal to them, but yeah, I know, I know I've heard tons of stories myself, Boston about those guys, you know? Yeah. So. That's, but that's admirable that he has that kind of loyalty. Okay. Yeah. The last question we have today is a, is an interesting question. It is how long do you expect to live? And it's from Zyker. Let's start with Andrew. Yeah. Go to Andrew first. Oh, geez. That's a hard question to ask, but hopefully now uh, a little longer than before. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see though. I don't like putting a number on that shit. You know, I just, I want to just live life as it is now and enjoy whatever happens, happens, you know? But yeah. I think I think oh, hopefully long. <laughs> Inshallah, I, I think though, Andrew, it's helpful to have the idea that you uh, to envision yourself being a 90 year old in good health with a grand great grandchildren. And you see that because when you have something in your mind as a vision, your life you, you, subconsciously, you do things in, in, you know, to get in that. Like, for example, if I have the idea that, hey, I'm going to die at 70 anyway. I, I mean, I don't smoke cigarettes, but I might smoke. I might have a few more drinks in the weekend yeah. or something like that. I might have a good time because you only live once. But if I'm thinking I'm going to live to 90, I'm going to have a great life for, for till 90. I'm going to have drinks at 70. So I don't, and I don't need to get wasted this weekend. Then my whole mentality just slightly changes. So I encourage you to think of that. Like really that that's, you're going to. I know that's an issue I've, I always had because I've always had like not bad luck, you know, but I always, shit always have, happens, you know. Like, Look at this. I have the number, uh, Thalpash. I'm lucky too, but you got to believe in yourself because if you that's don't it, nobody else I know I, that's something I've been trying to work on. Just trying to improve the mind a bit, you know, like past few years being sick and just like literally stuck in the house. I've just been going crazy, you know? So I just need to, uh, just positive. Kinda... positive energy, positive that's energy. It, that's exactly it. Yeah. Text me after so, we, yeah. I can have some ideas maybe. What yeah, about yeah, you, Boston? Sure. How long are you going to live? Um, how long do I think I'm going to live? I think I'll make it till 70. 
Excellent. Bravo. At least you're aiming somewhere. Now we'll aim higher next time also. 70 is good. Well, well I think 75. 75. 75. Yeah, it really depends because like if, if I'm like 75 and I'm still active, I'd be happy. But if I'm like... Um, but bro, like, the reason why you wouldn't be active is because you let the urea build up. That's the point. We want the urea not to build up so you don't get the damage later from the senescence. That's exactly what we were talking about. I basically have kidney failure, but I'm in denial. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the truth is, I've always had the feeling that I would die very young. I always thought I would die in my 30s. And I, from very early childhood, I don't know why I thought that. In fact, my father, to, the last time I ever spoke to my father, he told me that he thought, actually, he told my mother that he thought I would die within two years. And that was when I was, in my, well, I was 24 years old. So my father's last words to me in my ever life that I've ever heard from him was to my mother saying he'll die in two years just like your brother did. Were you doing drugs or something? I was an alcoholic. Oh, okay. And and he thought it would he thought I would die from violence or from alcohol. And I'm here, I'm still alive, and I plan to be here much after him and for the next uh, at least 80 years hopefully. Thank you for having me. Thank you Andrew so much for joining us. It was a great pleasure. Text me afterwards if you if you're curious yeah, about for sure. Because uh, this is a difficult struggle to find out how to live healthy and not be unhappy. By the way. For sure, man, for sure. I'll be in touch. All right, brother. And Boston, have fun with your gym workout. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I'm a fucking trend. No, I'm just kidding.